Psychology in Seattle. So, guys, have you seen the new Avengers movie? Oh, yes. We oh, have. Oh, yes. Most so, have. let's talk about it and also analyze the characters using concepts I have no idea how to use. What do you say? Sounds great. <laughs> Mysterious. This I is the it. Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. My name is Humberto Castaneda, and I'm a professional Discord admin. We have a special guest with us today from the Unpopular Culture Podcast. Why don't you introduce yourself, future Dr. Michael Drain? Hello, gentlemen. I am future Dr. Michael Drain, host of the Unpopular Culture Podcast. Whoa. So you you travel in time? Sometimes. Whoa. Sometimes I travel in time. Wow. Yeah. Mind blown. So ratings for Avengers Endgame, Berto. All right. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. And where does it rank in terms of all the other MCU movies? Uh, it is not my favorite, uh, although many people will be like, what? You're crazy. It's the longest. <laughs> <laughs> right, because that's what um, makes something the best. I, still, I mean, I still have a very fond place in my heart for Guardians 1. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's maybe, it's top three. It's, it's my top three. Top but three. Then, but then if I count uh, Iron Spider-Man Man into the Spider-Verse, it can't be, well, that it can't beat that. That doesn't count. That one doesn't count? It's not in the MCU. Well, how it's is a, that not the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Because Deadpool, X Men, those are not MCU. No, well, but those are a Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're Marvel, that, but they're not Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh my not gosh. this so Marvel confused. Cinematic Universe. All right, yeah. well, out of the twenty, there's only movies, one MCU. That's not, it's not okay. this. There's one out of MCU. the twenty-two movies in question. Yeah, I would say Guardians and Winter Soldier, and this one Winter probably Soldier. my top three. Really. Yeah, I didn't like Winter. Everyone loves Winter Soldier. I mean, it was good, but top three, I don't know. What about Iron Man 1? Yeah. That's yeah, number four. <laughs> what? It's uh, in my top five. Wait, no Black Panther? Black Panther is in my top 20. <laughs> <laughs> Drain, uh, rating out of 10. Uh, give it like a... I'll give it an eight. Wow. I was entertained. I enjoyed yeah. it. But I have a list of seven things here that drove me insane. Ooh. Yeah, I think... I, I love was, it. I was sitting next to you in the movie theater... And I think five out of the seven, I saw you react. <laughs> you just like threw your hands up and you're just like, oh, and you like muttered something to yourself. Oh my gosh. I was like, really? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, oh I, I can't wait to So much do, pandering uh, going on in that movie. Can't I wait to d- deal into that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm probably with you on seven out of 20 of those. We'll see. I mean, you guys are either going to love me for it or I'm going to piss you off. We'll no, see. I pr- you probably won't. So I gave it a, a seven and then the more I thought about it, I started demoting it to like a six yeah. what okay that's a spoiler alert i liked what it the hell i liked it six means i liked it six six means i would gladly watch it again uh, come on but it doesn't rank up there with uh guardians one um i even really like guardians two by the way i, I was uh, so hot on that one I, I liked iron man one i liked infinity war a yeah, lot infinity war was so great. good in fact i mean i I, so for me, it's like I went into this movie th- uh, really on the high of Infinity War and thinking this would just be kind of tonally a continuation of that, but it wasn't. Right. It was a completely different tone. Very different. Mm. And although for most of the fans, they're totally digging that tone, but to me, I was like, I, I kept, I, maybe I need to watch it again because the whole time, especially the first half, I was like, so when is it going to kick into that if Infinity War pace? <laughs> Because Infinity War, it moves so fast, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's so funny and yes. and and moving and and you know boom 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 boom. Whereas this movie, it's like long two scenes. movies wrapped it together. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, so when when is the funny and when's the when's the action going to happen? And then by the time the action happens, it's like the massive CGI battle scene, which is not very interesting to me. I see. Well. So, I can I can respect that, although I am shocked how low you went. Hello, Ken Kirk go. And I find that it, the fans, it, you know, because I think a lot of the fans really love this movie, um, which I actually don't consider myself to be an MCU fan, like a super fan, I suppose. Right. And I didn't read Marvel comics before that, right, you know right, what right. I mean? Except Iron Man. That was one of the only comics I read as a kid. Oh, really? but, but I didn't really know what I was reading as I was too young. You know? Sure. You know when you're like nine and you're reading a comic book that's that's meant for older people? Generic superhero saves the day. Yay! Well, I pretty much just looked at the pictures and thought like, ooh, wouldn't that be cool to have an iron suit that you could fly around in? But anyway, um, I found that this movie and some of the other movies, but particularly this movie, focused on characters that I really just didn't care about. Like, I care about Quill 
Sure. I care about Iron Man. I care about Spider Man, kind of. Um, they, by, by the way, they for me between Infinity War and then definitely this one, they ruined Quill for me. Yeah. Which oh sucks. yeah. He, Quill he was the my ball. Quill might have been my favorite MCU character. Huh. And I, I was like, why? And, and you know, last movie. Mostly he was okay, but then he makes like the colossal of all colossal mistakes. And I'm like, why? What? But, and so that kind of made him into a doof. But then this movie, they just kept going further. Now he's always insecure. Now he's always doofy. Now he like, what did he do that was cool? Where is cool Quill? Yeah. Hmm. Well, so similar in, in terms of where's Drax? Yeah, you know, the, Drax was like his whole mission in life was to beat Thanos. He didn't even get a stab in. Right. He, he and, got a shot in Infinity War. Didn't yeah, work out for him. Yeah. And which is great. So Infinity War actually had some of those characters more more right. screen time. Yeah. This movie, it like it focused on people like uh, the Falcon and other people. Where I'm just like, I just I don't really have a the connection. Wasp. <laughs> or yeah, or wasp, or, or oh, my favorite part is when uh, what's the gal from uh, Lost? Um, she was she yeah. is the Agent Shield. Oh, I thought the girl girl from Lost. Oh, sorry, uh, you're Lost right. is wasp. Uh, not not that the How I Met Your Mother girl, who's the Agent Shield. Okay, Colby Smulders. Okay, she when she shows up into the battlefield and she's like looks around like what the hell is going on? <laughs> I'm like yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, here? like who there's nothing you? you can do. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> Okay. So true. So, uh, spoiler alert: if you if you haven't seen uh, Endgame, watch it now and then come back. So, who who died officially at the end spoilers! of this? Spoilers! By right. the end of this, or including the last two movies, who's dead? Um, okay. Well, so, Arya didn't die. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Vision's dead. We I just thought talked. Arya was the waif. <laughs> oh yeah. So Vision is dead. And He's Vision's like dead. dead, 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 because he wasn't dusted by Thanos. Right. And so. They, but they, did they even talk about that? No, nope. it was just never really acknowledged. Well, they, they did in this one towards the end, right? They're like, "We'll remember," because she, uh, Scarlet Witch, is talking about Vision when uh, Hawkeye is talking about Black Widow. Yeah, couldn't but, there have been a way to keep that mind stone for him to and then rebuild his body? I mean, he's an android. <laughs> no, man, because those were not from this reality, so they got to return those. So. That's messed up. Or the actor You're doesn't done, want, bro. The actor doesn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> Plus, that character doesn't have any character it's like a non-character i am a robot right so it's not an interesting character to but it's got a very sexy british voice sexy. yeah so it's fine oh sexy all right so Just he like died i love you uh who else died uh oh uh what's his name uh, iron man <laughs> uh, uh tony tony's done yeah and uh, Honda and I sat down just before we watched the movie and we he leaned over to me he's like all right who is gonna die and i was like well He's like, I think it's going to be Captain America or it's going to be Iron obvious. Man. It was obviously Captain America who was going to get it. And I, I, I'm sure everyone, when he starts getting really beat up, like, this is how he, he goes out in right. this hor amazingly but horribly heroic fashion. Right. But no, he survives. Well, and he it doors actually, up. <laughs> in a way, they both, I mean, Captain America doesn't die, but he's essentially he, dead as a character. For sure. yeah. he, ret he retires. He retires when, in, in the most extreme of ways. Speaking of which, like, I saw all these things on the internet about like, Oh wait! So what happens to Bucky? Like you just left Bucky. That's my stuff. Uh, like yeah, the whole time. And then there was another anxiety. scene where like he kisses his cousin or something like that. What? And, like there's all these inconsistencies <laughs> with him actually sticking around for the whole timeline. Not to mention, like so what? What was he doing as? aging captain america when all the actual events and shit starts happening oh my god the time <laughs> the time paradoxes and i mean it's you know they, they pop culture has been butchering time travel for decades because but, we know what it's really like right right exactly <laughs> but this this movie was such an offender at just because they they sort of shit on the back to the future trope and all the tropes that are traditionally used but they didn't offer anything well, they, better, to, and they and contradicted themselves the whole time. I, I, I would say, in their defense, they actually did a smart thing, which is they said, don't worry about it. They're all separate timelines. Don't worry about it. Except <laughs> except Captain America can go back in time and then age throughout the timeline and, and reappear in, in the, the same, original timeline. Yes, I know. For I example. Know, know. That's just one example. Well, and yes, yes, yes. how do you return the timeline to its original state? I mean, you would have to like erase no. the fact that you even went back. You need the no. Back to the Future it, premise where it, you can, it's linear. You can go back into your past to affect absolutely. your future. Captain America, to your point, everything else before that scene, they had plausible deniability. 
the Captain America going back through the thing linearly yeah. to return the stones linearly, yeah. that breaks everything. Right. Because those weren't the same timelines. Ugh. In fact, the lady says it. What's her name? The the magician, the Egyptian magician lady? Yeah, the great one or the, yeah. the knowledgeable. Yeah, the Egyptian magician. She goes... Uh, <laughs> the Egyptian magician, I yeah. remember that. Sorry. She go goes... Uh, <laughs> oh, you, you got to return them to the timelines at the right exact time. Otherwise, these timelines will not have the right blah, blah, blah. So it implies that Captain America went back to, like, what, the 30s as a late 30s-year-old guy? Yeah? Yeah. Something like that? And right, because it was, it was, was that the first time, the 30s? Or was it 40s? 50s or 50s? 50s or was it World War II? World War II, so I guess it would have been... So, it was so like, let's yeah. say 1947 sure. or something, right after World War II. Yeah. Then he sticks in through time for the next... 70 years yeah. so how old is he exactly no, 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 but, but that part remember he's super soldier in fact it's surprising he aged that much because he's you know he ages okay. super slow all these okay. kinds of things and then he gives his captain america mantle to is his name falcon yeah yeah why well that was in the comics it's oh, just it was. yeah okay and, and it's because i mean granted falcon is not a super soldier so no he's a dude with the wings he's a dude with a wingsuit so i don't know what the hell he's gonna so do. how's he gonna oh, be captain she, america oh, <laughs> yeah, he's got chopped off <laughs> exactly. it's like come on but uh, the idea was... Give it to was, Bucky. No. You've got another super soldier with the exact same powers as Captain America standing right next to Falcon. I, I, heard, I heard a great analysis about that on, on some YouTube thing where Bucky was known worldwide or at least widely as a terrorist. <coughs> like he was a terrorist. And he hasn't like been redeemed in the public eye. He had to hide out in Wakanda for a whole bunch of time. So oh. for him to show up all of a sudden like, I am Captain America. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're a terrorist, dude. <laughs> right? Like that wouldn't go over very well politically. Where's I'm this other guy about your social standing? <laughs> right. This other guy has been around for since you know forever with Captain America. He is a well recognized hero. Blah 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 blah. I is he another. like Captain America's friend? Yeah, they're friends. They're buddies. It doesn't they're really because I didn't that. realize that from the movies. Nah, not from the movies. Like you'd have to know but, that from the comics, I guess. Well, that and and it's been a long time since you've seen Captain America. Because to me, I'm like. Do they even know each other? They but, right, that's what I thought. Oh, they did. Yeah, if from the movie, he but, comes but, no, from the but, Captain America movies, but I don't right? Blame you. Like what you're saying right now is a symptom of the of the movie in a bigger sense. Infinity War, I would contend, didn't require as much prior knowledge of all the little minutia as this movie for full appreciation. Oh. Because in this movie, it's like, who's that? Where's that? What is happening? If you didn't watch the whole nine yards and read the comics, there's going to be a lot of stuff oh, going over your head. So my question is, <laughs> who was the Asian guy, the one Asian guy in this entire movie, by the way, who was during uh, Tony Stark's funeral standing with a family? I think that was Wong. No, it was a younger Asian guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, the kid from uh, Iron Man 3, you mean? Oh, was that was it an Asian kid in Iron Man three? Oh, oh, uh, Tony Stark's little uh, protege engineer yeah. guy yeah, yeah, that yeah. he meets at another in another country. I don't, yeah, I didn't care for Iron Man three. Oh, okay, yeah, he it. befriends this kid that's yeah. sort of like a tinkerer. And you know, in Iron Man three, dude, just I mean, watch all the movies. <laughs> well, I, I remember liking Iron Man three. I just don't yeah. remember that detail. Yeah, it was extreme fan service, absolutely. Okay, like everything. All right, well, uh, so who else died? Uh, Loki is dead. Black. Oh, actually, so again with the time paradoxes, Loki is technically dead, but Loki in one of those timelines escaped with, with one of the cubes, right? With yeah. the cube. Yeah. So that's kind of funny. Boys, I got a whole list of, of issues with the time paradox <laughs> coming. Okay. Don't you worry. Who, who else died? Uh, Black Widow. Oh, yeah. right. Black Widow died. Of course. And that one had a convenient little... Well, no, the dude said Red Skull, who is so trustworthy, said that I can't bring her back. <laughs> But I didn't even try. Like, I don't think, did Tony try to bring her back? <laughs> and then. Uh, he go, said, he said, no, it was uh, Bruce Banner. And he said he did. Oh, right. right. He was I like, really I tried. tried I, really I tried, tried to bring fair. him back. But. That's oh, fair. really? That's, yeah. Oh, okay. There's just one little line about it. Yeah, yeah. He did say that. You're right. Mm -hmm. Gamora, the first Gamora is dead, but the second is back. There is a Gamora somewhere who doesn't like Quill because doesn't really know him. Yeah. But she's out there. That's kind of an interesting because if they do another Guardians movie, that'll be an interesting plot line. Where yeah. they like have to have the same romantic story all over line again. again. <laughs> or they won't fall in love. Or they won't fall in love. And it'll be Quill and um, <laughs> Nebula. And Nebula. Oh, yeah. wait, is Nebula still around? Oh, she is. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right, Except that she killed, she killed she herself. Killed, well, she killed 
past self in right. a different timeline. Oh, right. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so what's your timeline problems? Oh, my God. Oh, I, okay, so. Where, when do you start? It's not where do you start. It's so I'll when start, start with one of them. So they open the door to potentially having the ability to do time travel again because yep. Ant-Man's mentor guy is back and can make all that Pym juice stuff again. And so, and they have the technology, you know, or maybe maybe they'll Wait, explain is he it away back? like I know he yeah. was at the funeral, but I, I thought that was just like metaphor. No, is he's he back. literally back. Why is yeah. he back? Because he he snapped out. Oh, so he had died from the snap. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Did we know that? Yeah. Yeah. How did we know that? You saw that in. The I didn't ending. see Ant Man and the Wasp. Well, is well, that in Ant Man and the Wasp? Uh, no, maybe at the end of Ant Man oh. and the Wasp, uh, there's a credit scene. Where oh. <clears throat> the snap happens. And oh, okay. Well, okay. So if he's back, he's like, I got those particles floating out of my ass. Right. But maybe they'll explain it away because Tony Stark was the one who understood how to do it. <sighs> but it's like, break. it's all in the... Hulk had it. Yeah. He just had the, well, the one little be- detail he missed. How and... do you feel about the Hulk being like this new Professor fusion Hulk. of... Uh, yeah, Professor Hulk. How do you feel about Professor Hulk? Is that a thing in the comics? It is, yeah. Okay. It's sort of like Beast and X-Men a little bit. Yeah. Same sort of concept. Uh, I don't mind that they referenced it, but I was certainly hoping that Hulk would Hulk out finally after wimping out the last movie. Yeah. It, I mean, where was the... I was so waiting. Thanos was going to be like, oh, what are you doing? And all of a sudden, he was going to tap on his shoulder. I'm back. I mean, not that, but, you know, and then like, <laughs> bam! Yeah, but that's the thing. Bruce Banner is so mild-mannered and, and, and light-tempered. I think part of what makes Hulk so dangerous, yes, it's his strength, but it's also his rage. I, and, I understand. And you don't have that, that well, piece. Well, I, I think the MCU overseers are thinking, like, if we just play the same tropes, it's going to get boring. It is. Yeah. So we've had the Hulk out uh, gr- gratuitous scenes a number of times. Totally. And so they said, okay, so we're going to map this out over several movies. Sure. We're going to have one movie where he can't even become Hulk <sighs> right. until the very end of the movie. Then we're going to have another movie where he can only be Hulk and then we're going to have another movie where he's both. And then we'll have... Oh, a, and what, sorry, one, which was last one, which was only at the beginning. And then he can't come back. Right. Then we're going to have him in conch shells. One where he That's is smart. <laughs> what? We're going to have him wearing conch shells in like a Hawaiian <laughs> garb and right. the Rangarok. It was like ridiculous. <laughs> right. and, and then, then it, all of a sudden he could talk and he was very like... Uh, uh, it's like a spoiled three-year-old or something. No, it, throw tantrums all the time. And, I, I hear you. I, I, personally, I'm okay with all that, both because it's in the comics, but also because that part was kind of funny and fun. Yeah. Yeah. What I was just as a child, you want to do fan service? Last movie, he got totally be be slapped by Thanos. This was really fun to watch. Down on his ass yeah. and put to sleep. Yeah. I'm like, you got to get back from that. Hmm. And he did it. And I'm like, no. oh. Yeah, what true. is Thanos' power anyway? I don't really get oh, so it. So Thanos is a titan. But is he like Hulk? Because uh, he no, seems he's, like he's the he's strongest. He's kind of all of the above. He's like. He's more like a s- professor. Hulk, He's super right? intelligent, yeah. like astronomically intelligent, super strong, like astronomically strong. He is super powerful with magic. He is super, like, oh, oh, without the glove and without the stones, he is one of the most powerful creatures alive. Because that's what he was. He was, this was him without the stones. And so yes. they're fighting him. And I'm like, yes. I'm like, I know he's weaker. He doesn't have the power to shoot all his, like, beams and manipulate reality and all this extra right. stuff. Ooh. But he's still hella strong. And that's kind of what it comes down to. But right? that was why I was furious that I, I get that Thor was out of shape or whatever, but if in the last movie, Thanos having the glove with all the stones, and the gauntlet, sorry, and all the stones, Thor nearly kills him. Like, in this movie, he was barely doing any damage. And well, I'm like, okay, Beer why? Belly's getting away, man, you know? I guess so. I mean... I was happy that at least Captain America laid a little bit of damage. Well, that's... Since we're on the topic, this is another thing that really bothered bother me, is the Infinity War attack on Thanos when uh, Stark and the Guardians, and they're all on that yes. on Titan. That was... in Spider-Man, they coordinated that awesome, attack. Right? It was, it was so amazing. Good. And because they coordinated it, they almost had him, and yes. then Quill fucked it up. But yes. there was no coordination in this... In the, it was like one at a time. Like, Captain America's yeah. getting his ass beat and i'm like where is everybody right and then like captain marvel by the way is at least as powerful as thor some people would say more whatever and she's like flying with the gauntlet and at no point does it occur to her or anyone else like wait put the 
the snap. The, get rid of these guys. She was very. Like you can put the glove. Oh, it'll damage your arm for a little bit. You'll be fine. <laughs> That's true. Like, Hulk is fine. <laughs> she was very underwhelming as a character because it oh, ends Infinity dude. War with Nick Fury paging her. Oh, like, dude. she's going to be the savior of this whole thing. And then she shows up and, and she, she's not at all. She doesn't say anything. She says nothing. Uh, he, uh, Thanos, like, kicks her into another reality or whatever. She disappears for a long time. She keeps taking off. She's like, I got to be on other planets. Stuff's yeah, going on other places. That's the biggest cop out. To I mean, I get narratively, they, they write themselves into a corner when this all-powerful goddess can tear through spaceships. So hence well, why... Yeah, that's my problem. It's like, you can't have characters that are that powerful, especially <laughs> the... It's like Superman. The it's delta between her and everyone else, it's insane. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about... Black Widow, she can kick some butt. <laughs> and so it's like, and, and you know, but that's what the comic books are. Yeah. And I yeah. and I feel like it, it kind of works in the comic books, but it, in movies it doesn't work as well. I agree. And actually, last movie, they did a better job with it because right. they actually neutralized people in ways that sort of made sense, right? right. Like, like Vision, uh, they had a sword that... It made it so he couldn't phase anymore. Yeah, that's a cle the cleave or whatever. That thing apparently, of course, this is where you have to be a nerd and read the stupid things. But apparently, that's a universal object that actually has way mystical powers. So they didn't explicitly say it, but when he cut into him, that's why he wasn't being able to phase and all that stuff. But well, he did explain that. He said, "Yeah, they oh, cut me." With, cut, yeah. yeah. And then in other cases, like okay, they didn't quite explain what happened to Hulk, but we see Thanos overpower him. Like he overpowers Hulk. And so we're like, okay, Thanos is a being on level with the Hulk strength-wise. Then we see, therefore, it makes sense that he can beat up Thor. Therefore, it makes sense that he can beat up Loki. Yeah. Like, all these things make sense. Right. And, and then, but then it makes sense that when Thor goes to a star and gets all this power and then it makes this new, brand new badass weapon, it makes sense that he almost kills Thanos with that weapon. Because, like, you see the progression of the powers. And then... Captain America, who is just a strong dude. <laughs> ah, with the hammer? Well, some, yeah. Somehow is, well, the hammer thing I kind of get, but, uh, but he's Because he's able, worthy. But oh, he's come able, on. But he's, he's but he's able to push back on Thanos' hand. Yeah, I know. And Thanos is like, whoa, this guy's really strong. And I'm like, so Captain America is as, as strong as the Hulk? Are you that talking about Infinity War? When that but, well, both movies, he was going strength-wise head-to-head with Thanos. Okay. The only thing you could, I agree. I do agree. Huh. The plausible Captain deniability. America is just a strong dude. That's he's not like, how I perceived it. He's like the strongest guy on the planet, or well, one of the strongest right. guys on the planet. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, one quick point. No, is it's okay. The plausible deniability for them is that we don't really know the limits of the super soldier serum. So it's like, yeah, maybe he is that strong. But I more agree with you. You were going to say, Drain. Uh, I was going to say my perception. Of, I, I can't think of the end game example that you're talking about, but in Infinity War, when they're trying to stop uh, Thanos from coming after Vision in one yeah. last attempt, Captain America, like, holds his all the strength is holding one of Thanos' arms. And the look on Thanos' face is like curiosity. Not like, oh, I well, can barely yeah. hold this well, guy no, back. He's, my, my take on his CGI face was that he was <laughs> he was surprised. He was like, whoa, this guy is actually pushing back. All right. And Not that he was afraid of him, but right. he was like, whoa, like this guy actually has some strength. Okay. Or, or maybe he was surprised about his bravery or something. Because he did say something right after that. But think about the pounds per square inch that would have to be applied to push back on the Hulk, I know. and then apply I know. that I know, no, no, to no. a to a human body. You're not wrong. I you think would, you would liquefy. You would you liquefy a human body. You, it would be like going <laughs> through air. You'd just be like right. squash. No, no, you're you're <laughs> absolutely right. And and actually, because normally what happens is, uh, uh, Captain America usually uses his shield to deflect super strong things that are way stronger than but him. he's behind the shield and, and god the, damn it absolutely <laughs> and the reason that the, the magical shield can do that i is mean if i of, hold if i hold on to an impervious shield and thor pushes against me i'm liquefied on the other side of that shield do you know what i mean uh, right but the thing with vibranium is that it reflects all the energy oh. and so the magic of vibranium is explained that way yeah but it has with, an absorbing quality right to it. or absorbs and deflects You're but right, with, right, right. with just his hands he is a super soldier who is on earth level i agree with you the strongest but not the strongest compared to the Hulk or like... He's not even near the Hulk. There's plenty of other times, like the, the Infinity War when they're in the battlefield and, and Captain America and Black Panther are running ahead of everybody, kind right. of implying that they're about equal strength and speed and all that. Right, they right. just don't... It didn't... It's inconsistent at best. Right. Yeah. Now, having said all that, Infinity War 
even though there were those inconsistencies, I didn't notice it really because the story was told so well, in my opinion, and shot so well. Yeah. Like, there's, you know, you watch any of these movies, there's <laughs> lots of inconsistencies. Any Star Wars movie, blah, blah, blah. But it's all a matter of like how you tell the story and if you're artful, you don't right. really notice it. In this movie, uh, I didn't notice it as much as I noticed it in other movies. Because again, I thought it was a pretty good movie. Um, other things that I liked about it were I, I love the humor that they inf- you know infuse into everything. Yeah, they're really great at balancing the humor versus the seriousness. Yeah, and I actually really love the Thor story. Okay, yeah. I was going to ask you. Some people thought it was uh, you know terrible to make Thor look <laughs> bad, and other people I think it's a legitimate thing that it's a bit fat shaming on a certain level mm. because it's like oh I mean when they showed you know, Chris Hemsworth in that fat suit. I instantly cringed at how many of these nerds watching with us yeah. are that big or bigger right. and are now watching an entire uh, you yeah, know, room of people laugh, laugh at, at him. Them. Yeah. But that's disingenuous. Like if that Disingenuous? Yes, because then we have to Meaning rewind I'm the not, clock. I'm not genuine? Yes, not just I was going to say something, but not I'm you. lying. Not you. I mean, oh, like that, that I attitude. Mean because then we should rewind the clock and not admire his abs in the previous movies. <laughs> like, well, like we should we should look at the previous movies and be like, S- that dude, that normal dude looks normal. Well, no. <sighs> when we see those movies, we're like, damn, bro. I you, mean, do do you even not lift? Well, to you know? say to say that our society doesn't have problems with body image. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously we have problems with body image that involve nice looking bodies and our attitudes about it for sure. And this was, I don't, I don't cringe when Chris Hemsworth is on screen with his abs and people are, are admiring him. Uh, but I did cringe and wonder like, Ooh, is this hurting anyone's but feelings? But when they didn't even make that much fun of his weight. They they did. Uh, they made a few jokes. A, a it was few, a visual gag for sure. And they, I mean, and they well, used no, it more it, than once. Definitely a visual gag. But like, and even his mom goes like, eh, "Eat a salad." Eat a salad, right? But I mean, yeah, dude. Wouldn't you be concerned for your buddy who, like, five years ago looks like Thor, and five years later you're like, "Dude, what's going on, buddy?" Well, and that's the thing. The body is that fat shaming, or is that helping your buddy? The body thing is a bigger. Well, if Thor is essentially traumatized and this is a presentation of yeah that, right right so i that's where i thought you were gonna go honda is the, well i the so trauma aside piece. from my worry about hurting people's feelings which i i would love to hear from listeners about that um i every time thor was on the screen i was i was digging it i was like this i was i i loved his trauma i lo- and it made kind of made sense the way they had made his character in previous movies leading it leading up because when he first entered our consciousness, you know, the first Thor movie, he was kind of a idealistic boy man who was irresponsible and, you know, thought he was all powerful and he could do all these things. And then slowly he's kind of started to grow up and start having these bad things happen. Right. And then he became more kind of a, like a real guy, like Infinity War, he's more just kind of joking around and, you know, he went through all this stuff on Ragnarok. And so he, he's being more vulnerable. He's kind of growing up and he's starting to help other people out and not be so self-centered. And then the snap, and he is considered to be the most powerful Avenger, right? He's right. A, and he's a god. He's not even a human being. Even over Captain Marvel? Yeah. 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 I mean, Thor is like, he's a god. He's like, you know, he's like Zeus or something, yeah. right? And so imagine how horrible you would feel as a male, you know, just like, I failed the right. entire universe. Right. And I, I could have hit him. I should have gone for the head. And right. he says that. And, Thor and Thanos says that to him. I, I, it was that. my fault. Right. My fault. My fault. Fuck it. Everyone else has given up on the I'm planet. Done. Right. You know, Captain America's yeah. in in you know th- group therapy. <laughs> uh, everyone else, which is, was great by the way. I love that scene. Yeah. So fuck it. I'm just gonna do. A, I'm gonna have a, an, a a part of my personality emerge, which is the party dude who likes to drink beer with his buddies which I already had to begin. So it all kind of made sense to me. Yeah. And I just, when, when, and when he was dressed up like the dude and stuff, I just thought it was hilarious. And they're like, <laughs> you Lebowski. Yeah, yeah. It was so funny. And they're like, you know, and someone's like, um, like his mom or someone's like, what's up with this outfit? He's like, Oh, I don't know. I, I kind of like it. It's, this is kind of, you know, it, it, Chris Hemsworth is quite honestly, one of the funniest. Yeah. Actors. yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. He's yeah. really great. Yeah. I had a similar reaction to, um, Channing Tatum. 
Yeah. Channing Tatum? Yeah, that's his yes. name. He's um, really great, too. <laughs> he was, you know, he was a beefcake actor, but then revealed in 21 Jump Street that he could yeah, be he could, hilarious. He's really funny. So I, I find that um, that would be my perfect movie, Channing Tatum and Chris Hemsworth so, in a buddy cop movie. Although we saw him, I don't remember the preview, but Chris Hemsworth is in this other movie that yeah. they were featuring in the previews right. for an Endgame. He sounds exactly like Thor. Men in Black. Men in Black. He's like... Oh, I'm gonna erase your memory. Yeah. Very, very I Thor like. Mean, he's an Australian. So. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But you know, people change accents for roles all the I time. Know, Plus that gruffness, and he just he sounded exactly like but Thor. He got typecast a little bit. <laughs> I, I also really loved the Soul Stone scene between Black Widow and um, what's his face, Haw- yes. Hawkeye. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that was. I thought. I mean, although going into the scene, I was like. I don't care about either one of these characters. Like, yeah. I've never really cared about oh. either one. Oh, I actually really... Hawkeye is one of my favorite characters. No like, kidding. from the comic books? From the comic books. Right, but from the movies, he's kind of a dud, in my opinion. Well, I mean, he was kind of a badass, right? I mean, like, uh, in in Avengers, when you finally see him, like, using all his arrows and stuff, you're like, that's pretty cool. And in this movie, he was he was kicking some butt, man. Yeah. yeah. I now, mean, I, I will grant you that the guy is... Not on a universal power level. Yeah, he's so. like on the. He's like the second strain of the Avengers. I, the thing that right. The thing that bothered me about the Soul Stone thing was that they didn't know the secret, and yet they happened to send people that had something to lo- something they loved to give away. Right. Cat has something to offer. <laughs> yeah, yes, Kitty. Really. <laughs> She she thinks you're all stupid. Fascinating. <laughs> like someone pointed out in another YouTube video. Um, Imagine if they just said, well, Soul Stone, that, uh, that, that seems really scary. Let's send Hulk and, you know, uh, Ant-Man, right? I think yeah. that was the example. It's like Hulk and Ant-Man don't know each other. <laughs> don't care. So if they're like, you need to give up what you love most, they're like, fuck, we're screwed. We have nothing. What, what are we going to throw out? And then, you know, and so, and it doesn't have to be a person. They said just what you love the most. Oh, so it could be like your uh, DVD collection. So that's the other thing is people oftentimes carry things with them that they care a lot about, but not necessarily the most. So they could travel back, get the, whatever possession they love the most and yeah. come back and throw it over the edge. Right. Well, but also <laughs> Hawkeye has a whole family that he probably cares about more than, I hadn't thought of that, <laughs> more than uh, Black Wait, Widow. There's, a, there's an old stuffed animal I really love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah, had it since right. I was a little baby. <laughs> yeah. Let me go home, get it, yeah, we'll come okay, back. I'll be right back. Because, <laughs> well, well, you know, if, if, it happened to be that hard. Are these, these pants are my lucky pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the other thing. Like, Hawkeye and Black Widow, they're like, well, you have to throw what you love the most. Well, technically, doesn't Hawkeye still love his lost daughters the most? That's what I'm saying. Like, that doesn't make sense. That's what, Maybe because they're gone, it doesn't so count. So he can throw them over the edge? So she's like the runner-up of who he I loves guess. the most? But, yeah, and then for her, I thought she loved Banner the most. Right. I guess not. I guess not because there's this big, thick backstory between her and, and, and Hawkeye. Yeah, that felt really unresolved, too, the banner Black but Widow thing. But that said, I agree with you, Kirk, that that scene itself was Yeah, I cool. thought it was amazing. I mean, the yeah. way that they played that out. Yeah. And I, I just don't think you could have made a movie scene like that, even just like five years ago, given how we've mm-hmm. changed gender-wise, right. particularly in movies in the right. last five years. Because especially twenty years ago, right. it, it would have never played out like that. Like the man would have sacrificed himself. Of course, There's yeah. no way, and the woman would have like been kind of cool with it. You know, like it would be like, or she would have tried to stop him weakly. Well, you know, no. women. You, you know, know, but the man gets the <laughs> right. gets. It, but in this scene, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn what you care then, about. Going <laughs> over that. Cliff. In this women, in this in this scene, it's slap. like <laughs> slap. You know, Sit gender out. doesn't play a role <laughs> no. in the power. And by the way, the woman ends up sacrificing. <laughs> and she a, actually ousts uh, Hawkeye because they're sitting there trying to kind of yeah, scramble to, yeah. to get over each other. The first one well, to jump. I think we were sure that Hawkeye finally got it because yeah. you know he blows her up to the side and he's like, "Oh yeah, here goes Hawkeye." And I was thinking to myself, "Wait a minute." You guys are trying to snap everyone back. Don't you realize your family's coming back? Aren't they going to want to see their daddy? Well, that's the thing. That's the sacrifice. So that's why they set up both Iron Man and Hawkeye's family is to show that these two characters are making real sacrifices. Hawkeye tried to make a real sacrifice 
and it you know because if he was just a lone man it wouldn't have been a, it, but he's like wait my family might come back and then iron man gave up something he didn't he gave up his whole family and everything you know it was, it was like that they had to add that element to make it a bigger sacrifice I, I do hear that from that side and then finally she tricks all of us and she gets him and she falls can I, um, can I, oh, no, no, that's it. Can I give you, since we've gone through most of them, can I give you like my last two or three grinds yeah, do about it, this do movie? It, do it. Okay. Thanos tells Nebula about his retirement plans. Yes. He's like, he told her over and over again, I'm going to go to this mountain. Right. I'm going to go sit here on, in this garden on this planet. Yeah, if this ever comes to pass, if you need to look for me, <laughs> just FYI, this cunning, uh, galactic genius tactician totally gives his plan away who clearly doesn't like i mean he says he loves his daughters but he clearly doesn't trust them in the same way that normal people trust because he's always put, pitting them one against the other and he's like tricking them and things like that so it's like come on man i kind of liked the uh thanos story though like i know that the comic books i mean as someone who's read the comic books uh tell me what you think but to me the synopsis i've heard of the comic books motivation for the snap to me, is not nearly as interesting to me as what they did in these movies. Oh, really? So I actually like it better in the comics, but I could see. Like, so in the comics, um, he loves death, not just the concept of death. He loves Lady Death, the embodiment of universal death. And he's been after her for ages. He's just like wants to win her, her hmm. approval and her love. And she always just ignores him, ignores him, ignores him. And he's tried everything. He's tried massacring people. He's tried everything to try to like show him, show her his commitment to death and, and his love. So he's just trying to get laid? And basically. And then finally he's like, all right, well then I think I need to prove you how much I love you by essentially killing half of everything. Oh yeah. And and death and then when he you know, when he spoiler alert, when he finally does it, death still like doesn't give a shit. <laughs> So Talk he's, hard to he's get. unrequited, Jesus. unrequited love. Does he? Um, yeah, that's not as interesting as. Well, the I movies. found it more interesting because his logic is as pathetic as it is reckless. Yeah, right? I mean that's interesting, but, but I let the genocidal kind of mindset and and the the fact that there's a streak of logic behind what he's saying, right. but there makes isn't. it way and, uh, and, al and altruism, a very sick version of altruism, right? But there isn't. But there was in this movie, Endgame, Captain uh, America even says there are uh, there's a pod of whales back in the San Francisco Bay. He says that he's like, uh, you know, and the message is half the humans on the planet means better wild, better for the earth, better right. for wildlife. Right. Oh, so that's what's compelling. Thanos isn't necessarily wrong. Right. Morally, he's wrong. So it it is a movie. And they made it work to the ambiguous advantage. But the fact is, is that you can't if, deny that half of the humans and the infrastructure falling apart yeah. wouldn't benefit the wildlife. He killed half of all life on the in the including universe, including all animals. Well, including all bacteria. Is that including right? Including all mushrooms, protozoa, fungi. Every, oh, okay. oh, what are I, humans the same as aliens from Mars? No, you're, no. you're right. I didn't think about that. All but of I can life. See that. that means those pods are accidents because the other half were dead. And what about all the humans committing suicide over those five years because they lost all their loved ones? Yeah, that's what about another. The wars that broke out over the remain. How do you manage the planet when half the people are gone? No, the fact is <laughs> that his idea was stupid. Well, it, and then he realized it in this movie. Yeah. And, and well, that's a, that's interesting. Exactly what you're talking about, Berto. Why? Was it realistic that five years later they've still got an empty baseball field that looks like it's overrun with vegetation? And 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 don't you think that society would rebound faster than that after five years? I mean, there's a collective trauma unlike we've never even conceptualized. Before. I mean, who's gonna work? Like, like meaning meaning that's all those people without work because either they're not there, or they're traumatized, they lost their babies, yeah. or they lost their boss, or they lost the owner of the company, or they lost like. I don't know. Like yeah. who, everyone's e gone. Economies. I mean, it's, it's impossible to know, but the it's an interesting thought experiment. But e economies, the way that works today, would absolutely at least have a, a very difficult time. Oh, recovering. no doubt. Yeah. I, I'm just saying, after five years, would it f not find a way? Because you still have a lot of people on well, the planet. They they had power. They had services. They yeah. still people still had homes. There were still cars on the road. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it was just a lot fewer it, people. It, and if a, he, right, if he was being like magnanimous, he'd be like, "Look, 
Cal everyone calm down. Everyone's so like touchy about this. Yes, I'm going to kill half of everyone. First of all, I'm prioritizing bad people. So right <laughs> off the bat, don't get, don't get too up. Wait, Second. Did he? Part, no, I'm saying. Oh, okay, okay. Part of my snap, FYI, ungrateful assholes, is going to improve <laughs> all y'all's technology. And I'm going to double everyone's resources. So before you get up in arms, just know. <laughs> well, oh, no, not only I, that, part of the snap is going to sedate all you fuckers look, so you, you're calm about like it. I'm not critiquing it. Thanos' <laughs> logic. What I'm critiquing is the compellingness of a story <laughs> in the MCU movies as opposed to the comic books. And I find that the MCU films, this the Reese's motivation, whether flawed or not, and the villains are usually flawed, um, I find it just be more interesting. Okay. Then, then okay. I mean, imagine if they had made the real storyline yeah, in the movies. So how, how goofy that yeah. would be. Maybe like that doesn't play in a movie. I, yeah. I, I feel like that could be like uh, doing... And she, her head is a skull, by the way. Oh, that's hot. Sure. Okay, well, never mind. I, I changed my mind. I changed my answer. I, I understand that in movies, uh, suspension of disbelief is even harder, and I get that. So I'm not actually advocating that I, I had to have the same storyline. Just like with Watchmen, I can understand that the final boss alien thing was probably not the right way to go with the movie that said i actually find this incredible poetic like darkness to this mad titan who no one can relate to he has none his interests have nothing to do with our day-to-day -day interests he's trying to win the love of a universal entity that we don't even know about or can't comprehend it just seems so like, small-minded no that's his, he, his his thinking is literally more universal than that no but, the, you know? but how much more universal can you get that because understand it's not some sort of like when you and i might write a poem saying i pledge my love to death that's just words that means nothing this is literally the quote-unquote goddess universally of dying it's an entity yeah, yeah, that I, none of us could ever even see comprehend or anything and this person this in this other individual wants that love from this creature it is like this the, what is more important at that point to that to that individual i, I guess it's just like he's a omnipotent godlike being why would he be concerned with because she he won't he's give swiping him her right love. On, <laughs> on death yeah, right. but that's just it that's the the one thing he cannot get is her love he can, he's gotten everything else. i mean the, when you describe <laughs> it like on. that it feels a little bit more compelling i guess but yeah, I, I I think you're you know it, you're gonna it's gonna be a tough sell if you haven't read the comic. Actually, book. I'm gonna go a step further. Every great story at the core is the motive is love, not uh, social engineering. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my final grind: Pepper Potts and an Iron Man suit. <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> like what the actual? <laughs> fuck? And they yeah. have to show us their. Check it out! It's me. She's like, Ping, <laughs> hi, it's me, Gwyneth Paltrow. Remember me? Uh, the one that's constantly yeah. naysaying Tony Stark and the not doing <laughs> Iron Man shit. Yeah. Well, now I've got an Iron Man suit, and I'm gonna go do some Iron Man shit. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. I, Ugh. I mean, I get wanting to include uh, her, maybe. Or I, I get don't. wanting to have more women. I, you know, I get that, but uh, yeah. Oh that, my gosh! Speaking of which, plenty of strong female characters. Speaking to, of right. which, that scene was so annoying. Right. Oh, with that pander where they're oh. all like... So that was one of the scenes where I saw Drain <laughs> throw up his hands and go, really? <laughs> it was such a pander. Don't worry, we got your back. Yeah. First of all, Captain all Marvel All the women are standing need... in this group over here and we're right. going to do this. And, uh, Captain Marvel doesn't need your back, first off. <laughs> right. uh, uh, second, like, oh, the only ones randomly standing around in right. that battle right. happen to all be... Come on, like... Yeah. Uh, now and, that and, being and again, said, you know, there's nothing like all that you know, gender being all equal and stuff. But it was such a, and they could have done it in a more nuanced or but organic actually, way. Yeah, but the, the, I've actually read some uh, critics who are women because I wanted to know, like, were they were because the, you know, like when if I if it was if it was uh, pandering to. Me in terms of there's like ten Asian people, which of course we only have Wong, which is like the only Asian guy <laughs> yeah. around. So I guess it'd be just him. But <laughs> if there were like ten Hispanics. Asian, if they brought all the Asian Avengers again, of which there are none, uh, together into a, a group, and I was like, wow, that's pandering. But shit, that was fucking awesome. Hmm. So I so I looked for women's opinions because you know maybe they were just like. Yeah, I guess it's pandering, but man, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And all the reviews were like, okay, you know, 
that was a little silly. That like so, one one reviewer was saying it was sort of like '90s girl power. They said, yeah, yeah. And, and, and by girls. the way, it's totally counterproductive to the movement, in my opinion, because you already don't have to convince the average woman, right? Right. You you already don't have to convince like the people I, either feminist or on the edge of feminism, exactly. right? Well, yes. and you also don't have to convince the average MCU fan because right. Uh, uh, Captain Marvel was the biggest right. movie of all time. Fair enough. So all that but, leaves is... But the ones on the other extreme... Yes. Even... In, let's not go like the full Well, you're not going to do on. anything Fine. for them anyway. But, but yeah, let's but say they're the ones that are, if, that, if, are, that, are, that are like... That are somewhat critical, but they're not full trolls. This is going to make them feel like, oh, see yeah. what... I, now right. I see what these other assholes exactly. are saying. Right. Yes. And, and it's dumb. But anyway, exactly. What the other thing that so Having really, said that, it was literally three seconds of film. It was really... Yeah, I mean, it was The pretty, worst three seconds. It was pretty uh, short. It was well, pretty, I, the biggest me, bander I've ever seen. To me, seen. the worst three seconds. And it sucks because on the one hand, I did love the idea that that scene when... when uh, prof- professor... Um, Doctor Strange looks over at Tony Stark and... and does the number one right? uh, it's yeah like there's one opportunity and then tony's like okay i get it um okay that's cool and then and then technically speaking it's cool that his glove is powerful so he can grab all the little stones w- without thanos realizing it technically all that is cool but i have so many nerdy problems with this starting with the fact that like the gauntlet was forged in that same star where the thor thing was forged because that with, with gauntlet, large Peter Dinklage, yes, with large Peter, who's still called a dwarf, even though he's big. <laughs> that thing had to be forged there because it's like the only object in the universe that could hold the power of the stones. Yeah, or or, or we just quickly engineer it in Tony's lab. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Number one, number two. So you can just why do you need to go to the star, right. you idiot? You don't right. need to go to the star. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing, and I guess this plays into Captain America picking up. The, the hammer is the whole premise of these stones was you had to be of godlike yes uh, uh, you had to be a godlike being yes. to touch one of those that's that was how they explained how quill could yeah. hold the power stone because his dad was a god right. this is why thanos can touch one of these because he's essentially god like yeah. you know god tier right. and and normal people like the right. like the collector guy you touch it and, and you die you die everything the, explodes quill, quill barely was able to uh, right so so by the time we get to Tony holding a fully powered up infinity gauntlet that he made with all the stones. And by the way, when Holt put the thing on, it nearly killed Damn him. Damn near killed him. His arm Just was all shriveled. I know. He was in a sleep Tony's for weeks. like, got this. Yeah, no problem. And then sure, he dies after snapping his fingers. So that's not the comic books, I'd take it. No. So how does it work in the all. comic books? Well, so what happens is, first of all, there's none of this bullshit of like, uh, you can't wear it if you're not powerful enough. Uh, Number one. Number two, uh, Nebula ends up getting the gauntlet at one point, but she's been so trauma because Nebula in the comics has been tortured by Than. Oh, by the way, she kind of s- is. No, no, but this is um, so much darker. She has only been tortured. She's like this disfigured zombie-looking creature, oh, okay. yeah. and her whole life has been just mad torture by Thanos. No happiness at all, just torture. So she is like this disfigured, insane person. So when she wields the thing, she goes even more crazy. And then like, I think uh, finally Adam Warlock has to step. Uh, Like the point is in the comic, the whole thing about like, oh, only these people or those people can wield the thing is not not an issue. But in the movie, they established very clearly that it is an issue. Yeah. Having having said all this, I just want to say for the record, as I was watching that scene, it popped into my head, kind of, but the 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 arc of the story I thought was good, and I gave you know it's like the whole thing is ridiculous. It's a silly yes, movie. Yes, the whole thing is ridiculous. But and so I was just like, I was like, oh okay, and then he so he died. That was a consequence yes, of yes, touching it, yes. and of snapping it, of yeah. snap. Well, of sure, of even it being it. on because it was really getting into Fine. him, and so I was uh, at the time I was like, okay, I get it. And man, when it got quiet as he was dying, the sobbing yeah, in really? the theater. I'm not sure I've ever really? heard sobbing like that. In the no theater. way. I heard yeah. sobbing at the- All over. I heard sobbing. What? I heard loud weeping. Yeah. I At the end of Infinity War, there was sobbing as well, but this was like 10 times- You're kidding me. There were, I, yeah. I would guess, I mean, we were in a packed theater- and it, it was one of those theaters with the big lazy chairs, so there weren't that many people. It's probably hundred people or something. Sure, I could individually hear probably twelve people sobbing. Yeah, that's oh my god. Yeah, that's about right. And I it didn't was hear like, any of and that. how many 
of the other people were crying right loudly or you know sobbing but they were quiet about it right you know? oh. it, it was intense i was like i you know it's actually funny to think the only other time i've been in a situation like that would be at an actual funeral hmm. where you have like half huh. the crowd crying Interesting. Like, like it's a rare rare cultural right, right, experience right. to be at a movie and to have people it wasn't like crying like i cry at the drop of a hat like you know i'll watch an at&t commercial like i say and i'll start crying because you know they press the right buttons <laughs> and they have the right john williams music and it's like oh my god i want that father to you know meet up with it i want that father to use that phone on the back of the thing and call his kids it's yes, so beautiful I will update my long distance plan <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly what well, and uh so uh but that kind of sobbing that so so there's crying at the end of movies like i'll cry in frozen and shit you know but the kind of crying that these people were doing it was like the sort of crying you do when you lose someone yeah, you it was, you loved yeah. oh. it was you real. know what i mean so i wonder we, what the fa what the this is really fascinating because i cried that way in batman v superman really yes I think I cried too. I cried when, when that Superman, way Superman died. in Batman v Superman, and at least two parts of that movie. And when, when Superman died, definitely when he died, but also the uh, I think in the towards the early parts when Batman is actually trying to rescue uh, in the in the in the fog of war of the building collapsing and all these things. Uh. As, see, for me, I always cared way the hell more about DC. Mm -hmm. Number one, number two, the DC movies, and this is one of my biggest gripes about this whole thing. All these people gave so much shit to the DC movies, that one and Justice League, because, oh, it's got, you know, weird plot holes and emotional holes and blah, 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 blah. And to me, like, I see just as much shit to complain about in movies like this one. Well, the problem is, I think the tagline is that the MCU movies are so much more charismatic. Like, the DC movies might have similar, quote unquote, problems, but the characters are so less charismatic than, I, I'll give than, you than Iron Man, than Thor. Yes. And than, they're not funny. Than Quill. Well, are well, we talking about the characters or the actors that are playing those characters? characters? I don't know. Whatever, whatever's happening. Because no, I actually did not like Iron Man pre-Robert Downey Jr. I thought he was an yeah, arrogant, it's the, it's the one-note character. Yeah. And then Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. just completely brought it to life. No, I think he, somebody like Quill is brought to life by the actor. You're, too. you're absolutely right about that. I, I can't deny, and I like Ben Affleck, but just certainly... think about think about uh, what's his face, yeah, the Superman. Henry Cavill. Yeah, it's like no, no, you're right. Yeah, and I think guy's, actually, yeah. okay, that's and, the first. And, you know, Ben Affleck. <laughs> that is the first explanation I've heard that makes sense to me. Honestly, Chris you Evans is like that. And Captain because, America is like a one night one note boy scout and the actor reflects that but but what i can't stand is where the explanation is like oh it was full of holes or oh there was no emotional path but i actually i can relate to that now i see what you're saying maybe yeah. the reason have I you didn't... seen have you seen aquaman yet by the way no my god it is it is a train I, like there <laughs> yeah. are rare there are rare movies where i will i will in the middle will just or maybe a quarter in with this movie i was like this is one of the worst movies that's ever been made. No you know, kidding. Whenever I see those kind of reviews, though, like there are people who said Endgame was like the worst movie they've ever seen. Yeah, no. And I'm like, well, come on. Like, right. if you didn't like it, I get it. But you can't say it's arguably the worst. I, I honestly think Aquaman is one of the worst movies. <laughs> like, it, oh the God. humor isn't funny, and it's it, it appears to be written by like a fifth grader. Wow. <laughs> the story is completely convoluted. The CGI is so cartoonish because you know they're under water yeah, yeah. a lot right and so there are fantastic way to watch it <laughs> yeah it and and there are, i don't i didn't even understand it i was like yeah. there's all these people because they're introducing essentially a brand new character's world right and they have sort of like end game level pl like plots where i'm like wait who's what oh, and then I there's see. a giant crab at the end that it, no. or a giant sea creature that is like the size of like hawaii island or so it is Jeez. it is a gigantic the animal kraken? It, it's bigger than the kraken it's like as big as like like if this table were the crab you know aquaman's like like a centimeter tall at oh the top you know what i mean like it was this tiny it was like 
so that creature lives on Earth this like, whole time. <laughs> yeah, like how that is. If you were in another planet, you know, I guess you but, can't detect. So the problem with uh, radar and sonar and submarines is after creatures get that big, you just can't detect. Yeah. Them. Plus, there's the Marianas Trench and satellites. Uh, right. So I encourage you to see this movie. It's really bad. One final question, jumping back slightly. How did Tony Stark get the glove? How did he do that glove switch with Thanos? He didn't switch. He he grabbed all the stones. I don't think he even needed to because the electronics were able to. Because oh. remember, nanotech. Yeah. Nanotech. Right. That was the whole time. Nanotech. <laughs> right. Nanotech. It's the answer to everything. You can create extra in, infinite amounts of matter. No, listen, listen. Honestly, I really actually did enjoy it. Hence why yeah, I said you gave 8.5. No, I gave it an 8. You bullied me into 8.5. I'm going to stick with 8. <laughs> How is it me bullying? No, United I, we stand, Birdo. Yay! United we stand. Boom. No, I'm kidding. I, you didn't bully me, but I... I I was. Did you give it an eight too? Yeah, oh, okay. slightly pressured. And that's generous to move it to an eight point five. I'm gonna stick with eight. Yeah. I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it. It sounds like a little bit more than Hondi, but, but, I don't. But I, in fact, the reason I'm rallying so hard against the things that I didn't like is because of my friend Seth and his hatred of DC. Right. So, <laughs> well, so I just want to talk about all the things that I that I really did enjoy. Um, once I got used to the tone of the movie, I really did enjoy all the uh, the emotional beats. Like I said, the Thor and his mom, um, Iron Man and his dad was less compelling, but still touching. Ha- I actually, yeah, I really liked that. That was cool. Ha- Hawkeye and his family, that was brutal, man, yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and again, the soul gem uh, scene was, right. was pretty intense. Uh, the funerals at the end, the beat at the end with... Captain America returning, we already talked about this, as an older person, I thought was just a beautiful way. Because it's like, Captain America has to die too, probably. Right. But it's like, he does so in this very quiet way. You know, it it was like, he just grew old. Yeah, you know? graceful retirement. Yeah, yeah. it was like, it, it, he, and he had this wonderful thing. And then, you know, Falcon asks him or something like, what so happened with the girl? What's, what's the ring? And he's yeah. just like, I don't want to talk don't, about it. Don't that. ask about it. Why not? I'm your friend. You're giving your shield. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, really? You yeah, don't I trust should, me? I should never give you that shield. And I have to say, the, the girl power scene, uh, a part of me kind of liked it. Like, I, at the time, I was like, you know, watching Drain throw his arms up in the air. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I have 50% of me is in that ca- ca- you know, camp. But 50% of me also was like, whoa, there's a lot of women characters in this powerful women characters that we love in this movie and i thought yeah that's kind of fun i mean that's cool but do it in a less deliberate yeah way. i get it but i just thought it was you know it's just i just like it reminded me actually of wes anderson darjeeling limited when the three brothers start getting in a fight with someone that's that starts to you know like the three brothers are fighting all the time yeah. and then all of a sudden this one guy starts attacking one of the brothers and then the three brothers, the three brothers mean mug. They all get this mean yeah. face, like. Yeah, yeah. And there's just something touching when people stand up for their loyalty people. I, I wish because what happens is uh, Valkyrie is actually super super powerful, and other than Captain Marvel in that little group, she was way more powerful than everyone else. So, what I actually was a little disappointed by is when they opened all the rings, since it was total fan service. Oh, look at them! Oh, I recognize that one. Right. Oh, I remember that yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. But in reality, Valkyrie didn't get to shine enough. She flew around in the little Pegasus and whatnot, but she is almost as powerful as Thor. Well, they give her Asgard. Yeah, that's why I was saying like they they in fact, if anything, it would have for me it would have been more impactful if her and Captain Marvel go through and kick some ass and just like lay some a line of waste or something. Yeah. But anyways. So what about the the line where he says, you know, I'm inevitable or something and then Tony Stark says, I am Iron Man. I yeah. am Iron Man. Because I, he because he says I am and I'm thinking he's going to say something epic. Yeah. Like I am I am like I don't know, something I can't even think of a line, but all he said was I am Iron Man. It's like, it, yeah, we know. It's, a co- <laughs> it's, it's how the first movie are. ended. It's the last line he utters in the first movie. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's the press conference. Yeah, it just and then seems he really like. But don't you think the like there could have been a more epic Tony yeah. Stark? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's witty, also an Ozzy yeah. Osbourne quote. I mean, I guess so. Yeah. You know, it works. Um, the other thing I didn't like, tiny little thing, is the Falcon. His beard. Did you notice how weirdly it was? It was uh, quaffed or. Uh, styled. Oh, really? I didn't notice. So, 
It's like a partial neck beard or something, wasn't it? No, rewatch it. It is one of the weird. So you know how people trim their beards. You know, like you guys seem to just cut it short. Yeah. But you know, a lot of people will. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll cut all specific. their neck hair off, and they'll have like a line. You know, be so. His is, and this is a podcast, so you can't really see this in podcast land, but Berto and Drain, you can't see it. So normally when you do a trim, you go all the way down to the jawline, right? Yeah. And then under the jaw, you have no hair, right? So you just keep it real tight right around the jawline. His is about a centimeter above his jaw. And so the bottom line of his, of his, (laughs) you know, trimmed beard is way above. There's so, so it's like, and when you look at him straight on, he looks like he has a small chin, but when he turns to his side, you can see that his oh. his beard is like really high up, and it makes him look kind of kind of jowly. And I never ways. noticed that. I guess I don't yeah. care about that character right. enough. I don't. I, so I didn't pay he's attention. barely on my radar as a as a person at all. But apparently, he's Captain America now, except yeah. with no powers. So well, that'll be fun. Yeah, that so, was that was one of the things that I felt that as soon as Iron Man started having like a billion suits and then there was war machine and there's the that dude and oh okay, hey okay everyone's got a suit yeah. and then spider-man's an iron man and <laughs> so Spider-Man's before cool. we before we get to the main point of this episode we'll go we'll go to a break but before we go to the break um and after the break we'll talk about Jungian stuff uh I just want to talk a little bit about the red pill man children stuff one person on rotten tomato said the avengers died with stan lee this this is a chick flick movie. And then the next line, <laughs> either one of you, can you help me ex- oh explain this? They, he says, yes, eat vegetables sometimes. What does that mean? Maybe a That's refer the line to the Thor the mom, eating the a mom salad. tells him, eat a salad. Oh, okay. And then there was someone that wrote a bad review in Spanish. So I'm going to try to read it in Spanish, <laughs> Brito, and you tell me what it says. Okay, well, that'll be fun. Uh, sobre sobre vala, valorado. Sobre uh, valorado. Overrated. Oh, Tiene cientos de aguajeros de guion. Uh, it has tons of ho- plot holes. Ooh. No respetan las pajodoras temporales. <laughs> uh, they're not they're respecting time rules or time travel rules or something. Ridiculous son a dos <laughs> personajes importantes de la trama. Uh, wait, r- ridiculous what? Uh, dos pers- personajes. I mean, those means two, per- two, two, uh, two characters. Importantes de la trama. Two important characters. De la trama? Tra- trama? Of trauma? No, de la trama. What? Important, importantes de la trama. Can I just say I'm having a real know. good time right now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thanos pasa a ser un villano generico mas. I know, uh, that, I know that one. <laughs> Thanos becomes a more generic villain. <laughs> Momentos forzados y poco Forced convincentes. And, and not very convincing. Captina Marvel es <laughs> insinceria y aporta poco o nada para... Yes. El gran marketing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> que se le hizo. Hizo. Yes, yes, yes. What's yes, that? Yes. She's just not good. <laughs> I uh, mean, el, that... el ocho zero percentes de los chistes son tontos infantiles. Yeah. Están de <laughs> Most más are... y le cuentan seriedad a la historia. Yeah, most of the jokes are, are, are childish and they take away from the seriousness of the story. Oh. Exceso de fan service. Exceso de fan service, yes. Muchas, too much fan service. Muchas de las ascensios de los perjones no están bien justificadas. Oh, uh, Many of the uh, something of the of the characters are not actions, well justified. Action, oh, acciones, acciones. acciones. Iron Many Man, of the actions of the characters are not well justified. Iron Man bailamos in la discoteca. <laughs> <laughs> Tengo <laughs> mis pantalones todavía están en el baño yeah. con mi cerveza. Oh my God! I love when you talk like that. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, yeah. Iron Mano, uh, donde esta el baño? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break. When we get back. Let's talk about the Jungian aspects of the characters. What do you say, guys? Let's do let's it. Let's do it. All right, we're back from the break. Just a few things here. We are going to start some new tiers starting June 1. 
Oh, wait, what? Yeah. Not those tiers. Starting on Patreon. So if you're not a patron yet, or you are, and you want to make sure you're getting a certain benefit, uh, the tiers are going to increase in price June 1. So become a patron before then and get the benefits early. Also, we have a scholarship, our second scholarship. This one is for $2,500, and you can apply on our website. The due date is June 30th. We've already had a couple applicants, so do so now. The application on the website is pretty easy to fill out. It's, It's not really an essay format, but I encourage you to treat the form as if it was an essay. Some people are submitting uh, extremely limited responses as if I'm just asking for a couple sentences. In the essay portion, I'm really asking for like, you know, a number of paragraphs essentially. Um, Also, if you haven't visited our fan page on Facebook, do so now. It's it's a place that I don't go to. It's kind of fun. Also, we started a Discord. We've been announcing it lately. Discord is like a forum where people can chat and talk, and we're going to try to be on Discord. I'm going to try and be on Discord every Thursday, 2 p.m. Seattle time. Ooh, can I come? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I invited you during the first time I was on. Yeah, I've been busy, but I want to go. I'll yeah. Be there. Uh, Berto's on there sort of periodically throughout the day, and the, t- the fans are on there all the time. It Discord traditionally is a platform for gamers, but it really can be used for anybody, and in five years, I predict either Discord or um, Slack will be ubiquitous for half of Americans, and so um, it's something that we're getting into kind of early. The kind of the cool thing about Discord is that if you're a patri- if you're a patron and you link your Patreon account to Discord, you get a special badge or a color to your name that indicates the level of a patron you are, so you can shame all the non-patrons out there. <laughs> That's a nice bonus. That's a perk in itself. Uh, also, if you want to access our older episodes, which a lot of people ask about, particularly like our premium episodes, like sometimes people want to hear the premium episode about passive aggressive personality disorder or something. And that, that was a long time ago. It's hard to find on your phone app or whatever. The only place that you can really find it is on our website. So make sure you, if you're looking for older episodes, use our website. Do not use Patreon to find older episodes. It's a ridiculous um, method to do so. Uh, make sure you go to our website. I, I've, we've made it uh, pretty convenient, as convenient, I think, as you can make such a thing. And a lot of people use it. I, I think it's, it's easy to do. Um, obviously become a patron of the podcast, uh, because, uh, you deserve that. And also become a patron of Michael, future Dr. Michael Jane's podcast called Unpopular Culture. Uh, what's one of the episodes you put out recently? Oh my goodness. We just did a, uh, serial killer analysis on Ed Gain and the guy who inspired the, um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Psycho, the guy who would dig up body parts and try to recreate his mother. Psycho killer? Psycho Bodo. Qu'est-ce que c'est? <laughs> so let's talk. So, Drain, why don't you explain this exercise that you thought we should do? Gentlemen, there I was, 3.30 oh. in the morning, laying in bed, thinking about you two. And I was oh. like, oh, my God, I have the best idea. What if we took... Wait, where were your pants? <laughs> you know, um, they were kind of, <laughs> they were just sort of strung about in this, okay. in a very okay. haphazard fashion. I'm not okay. comforted by I that. I didn't have time for <laughs> pants, Kirk. I didn't have time for pants. <laughs> he was thinking about us. What I was do? thinking about <laughs> you and archetypes. So I was like, okay, Jungian archetypes applied to the Avengers characters because Whoa. in a way they're sort of like, they're sort of archetypes unto themselves in a way. And there's a collection of them. Okay. I've invited Dr. Jordan Peterson to join us today. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Carl Jung is uh, one of the... By er- the way, Drain, I love that you don't know who Jordan Peterson is. Yeah, I have no uh, idea. That is... Um, You've been able to stay out of the... Yeah. Who is he? Oh, but it's just this dude. It's a he's Canadian. a podcaster and an author, but he is a cultural figure that is the champion of a lot of people that we're not super enthusiastic about in our society. Huh. Uh, Peterson has a lot of uh, valid and wonderful things to say as a fellow psychologist... Oh, he's a psychologist. And a professor as well. He's just like you and me. He's just a, a someone who teaches and someone who practices and yeah. someone who has a podcast. Except and, we're better. Well, <laughs> and he, but he became very controversial because he has, he has in essence, right-wing points of view. Huh. Uh, and, and, it, and he's very- You don't very, see a lot of therapists he, like that. No. And so that's part of it. And he's also extremely convincing with his rhetoric. Hmm. 
and he's a, and he's so smart that he's able to be extremely convincing and and like I said, the champion of a certain element. And he's become extremely divisive. And a lot of listeners have asked me to talk about him. And just me saying what I just said will cause like a hundred emails of of hatred. You from, don't get it. They'll either hate me for not hating him, or they'll oh, hate right. me for criticizing right, him. Right, right, right. I, that's all I get. That's I like get, when I went after Teal Swan. What? Who's Teal Swan? She's a cult leader uh, or a spiritual oh. figure, depending on your you point told of view. Me about. Yeah, yeah, she she runs most of her following on Facebook and YouTube. And she's only in her mid thirties. So did you get? Obviously, you got a lot of emails saying, "How dare you criticize this person?" Some people did, and some people were like, "Oh my god, thank you for saying this. She really freaks me out. Her rhetoric is, is really creepy." But and did anyone else say, "I can't believe you didn't hack on her more"? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I had I had people on both sides of the fence right. coming yelling at, me at about you, it. yelling at you, like, "I can't believe you didn't yell at her more." You yeah, can do I can't no right. believe you criticized her at all. Right. Yeah, it's like it's interesting. Did you know that that was going to be a hot button issue for people? I mean, I I was I would I thought about it because she's an active spiritual figure that. But you, but you talk about a lot of controversial figures, but I it, do a lot of cult leaders and serial killers and 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 stuff like that. But they're usually people in the past, people who are either dead. Like I just did one on Albert Fish, the guy who used to cannibalize children. But that was a hundred years ago. He was electrocuted in the thirties. Uh, Teal Swan is right now an active character yeah. in the world so yeah. it's That's interesting yeah so it's well, I always i'm always just so fascinated by these kinds of cultural things and to be targeted by people on both sides and uh, you know i do a lot of episodes on a lot of different topics we yeah. have three episodes right. a week so i'm i'm pumping them out all the time i don't really have time to reflect on like well what's this going to do to the world right and every once in a while like whoa, this caused a reaction. Like right. when we did episodes on Michael Jackson, I, <laughs> I was like, you know, we do, we talk about all sorts of stuff. Man, did I, I had no idea how. Raw nerve. Yeah. And, and Jordan Peterson, same. Like I remember I just did one random like bit on Jordan Peterson because I, I thought no one knew about the guy. And man, was I wrong. And same with this Teal person. It's just like, you put out all these episodes and you make this one episode, you're thinking, well, maybe people, and then you're like, whoa, there's this whole internet kind of, energy around these people yeah and people are so polarized out there they're yeah. so dichotomous so, in their thinking so one quick tldr is that um it, 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 peterson's uh, core point is that the archetypes that we see in our life and in stories they're not just metaphors that they stand for a deeper truth that is as ancient as evolution itself i mean that's kind of similar to what they actually are yeah but 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 then then he ties it to the metaphysical and therefore why there's a deeper truth to the bible than we even know the bible yeah exactly well so Jung, from what i understand Jung actually held similar ideas in the collective unconscious collective unconscious right there was a mysticism a metaphysical explanation to it all right. and you know it's a essentially a religious or spiritual belief system right uh and anyway so let's go so please continue with your explanation of this you were so you, there you, I was. you were pantsless, pantsless at three thirty in the morning us, thinking and, about you two and you were <laughs> hot and sweaty hot and sweaty thinking about the two of us restless that's a normal night for yeah for you know thursday right <laughs> so so basically i don't know i think i think archetypes is one of the things where i i don't know what the lay person knows about archetypes does that happen to you kirk where it's like I think my perspective on people's understanding of art. So I don't know what to explain here. Most I, people know nothing it. about just explain it. it. Archetypes are fundamental um, tropes within humanity that everybody uh, is capable of experiencing. Okay, is that yeah. sufficient? It's one definition. Sure. I mean, I mean, add to this, please, because I don't. I, I mean, it's like you know. You can get specific people, right? Like, hey, this guy is his name is Drain, yes, and he's an archer, and he saved some people. Uh, cool. But but we could find in your behavior and your actions and what you represent a pattern that has been there before, right? And then we can kind of group you together with like, oh, he's kind of like this Lancelot figure. But or but something. a pattern that every the three of us in this room and everybody in, that's a human is capable of accessing this pattern because it's a fundamental experience among right, humanity. Right. Like, and then some people might lean more naturally towards some combination of patterns over others. The idea that Young put forward was that look, we all have these 
collective things. We're all the same. It's a very mm-hmm. normalizing kind of idea mm-hmm. that we're all the same and and we are connected in this way. Mm-hmm. Back in the day on Unpopular Culture, I, I brought this guy on from ESPN, this guy named AJ Mass, and we did archetypes of the apocalypse Eek. for the Walking Dead characters. Ah. And so uh, it's been a while. But nice. I wanted to bring it back for the Avengers and see how it worked. <laughs> Let's do it, so, man. So I have passed out. Nobody knows this, but we've made a list of the main arch- uh, the main Avengers characters. Uh, Honda, Berto, and I all have three cards that we have picked. We're each gonna, we've are each we each picked three characters. And then Berto had a really great idea where we're going to read the archetype and, and, see and the other two are going to guess what we think it is. Yeah. Which Avengers character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. All right. Oh, one more thing. Every ar- every archetype is not inherently good or bad, even if they might sound like they are, like a thief or a, a prostitute or a, a, you know, whatever, whatever. They're not inherently good or bad. There's a light and a shadow quality to it. And that's on this card. So cor- correct me if I'm wrong. Even the fact that there's light and shadow, shadow doesn't necessarily mean bad. bad. No, it's like there's two sides of the yin and yang, and right. and and uh, you might want balance, or you might want some par- portion of one and a portion of the other. Exactly. Okay. In fact, Young wanted people to own their shadow. It wasn't about avoiding right. those darker sides, but embracing them and, and folding them into your overall person. And Similar to IFS as to why you brought that up earlier. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a IFS, IFS cards that are like this too. We won't go into it. Okay. It's this whole crazy thing. Oh, that that the cult thing. So why don't I just <laughs> why don't I just read off the characters? Jordan Peterson talks about no, just <laughs> list of characters that we're going to choose from in this game. We're going to have Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark. We've got Chris Evans as Steve Rogers, Captain America. No, no, don't tell people. Don't tell us. No, no, no. These aren't the ones I'm picking. I'm just, I'm oh. just. Going to oh. summarize the characters in oh. the Avengers oh, so right, that everybody people knows. Might not have, yes, yes, just yes. to put it into perspective. Fair enough. We've got the Hulk. We've got Thor. We've got Black Widow. We've got Hawkeye. We've got Rhodey. We have Ant Man. Who's Rhodey? Wait, who's Rhodey? Is that the Asian guy? No, the, uh, um, Don Cheadle. Oh, his Iron name Man. is Rhodey. Yeah. His name is War Machine. Yeah, something. but his name his his <laughs> name is James Rhodey Ro- Rhodes. Oh. James Rhodes, and they call him Rhodey okay. as a nickname. You know, haven't you seen I, Iron Man? I have never caught. His nickname, Rhodey. Yeah, he calls him Rhodey the whole time. I, I, what is wrong with me? How have I skipped that knowledge? What kind Did of you comic? know this? Well, the thing is, is Iron Man 3 was, what, like 10 years yeah, ago? Yeah, It's true. been a while. Okay. Did, so you didn't know Rhodey either? Or no. Did you? no. I, I, I've seen all the okay. Iron Man movies. All right, so, so War Machine. Okay, War okay, Machine. Okay, we've got, and then finally there's Captain Marvel. There's Nebula. She's the android in the movie. Yeah. There's uh, Rocket, the the raccoon, Rock, who's Rocky played raccoon. by Bradley Cooper. Yes. Did you know that? Yes. That's crazy. We've got uh, Pepper. I shouldn't be in an Iron Man suit. Pots. <laughs> we have Thanos as Josh Brolin. Those are the ones that we're gonna pick from. I like Thanos <laughs> as Josh Brolin. Oh yeah, yeah right, 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 right. <laughs> or the other way around. J- Josh so- Brolin looks like a Thanos right off the bat. You know, he's got that gruff. Oh, he killed it. Yeah, rough, he was rough. he was awesome. And I thought the CGI was really convincing, considering he's a big purple monster. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to pick, of those lists, I'm going to give you my cards, and you guys guess what they are, okay? My first one is the Hermit. The, the hermit. hermit. Which character is a Hermit? The Light Attributes seeks solitude to focus intently on inner life. And serves personal creativity. Shadow attributes. Withdraws from society society out of fear of negative judgment of others, refusing to help those in need. The Hulk. The Hulk? Well, so the great one, which wasn't on your list, uh, What's Her Face plays that character, right? Which uh, one? Uh, the Doctor Strange's mentor. Oh, right, um, right, right could be considered a hermit you could also say thanos could fit that a little bit so that's my guess thanos okay i'm going the hulk man i assign this to thor uh, thor because the, the hermit the, in the, I'm, I'm strictly going within the storyline of story endgame of oh yeah. where he's he's hiding out that's fair right. that's fair he's hiding from society that's and fair. he is definitely embracing his shadow attribute of withdrawing from society out of fear of negative judgments but, but you gotta admit like the whole storyline of the hulk is that like, yes? Remember the TV series? The whole thing is him hiding and withdrawing from society to avoid being judged as the Hulk. Because you know what? 
You wouldn't like him when he's angry. <laughs> he's too young for the TV show. Fine. I know that saying, though. He's too Carl Young for the TV show. <laughs> well, okay. And in this movie, you just have to say at the beginning, Thanos is absolutely hermiting. That's true. That's true. So well, I, I think he's hiding. We're, we're all right. We're he's all not, he's right. not hiding as much as he's retiring. No, child, no podcaster left behind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Birdo, read a card. All right. Um, seeker. This is the Seeker. The light attribute is thirst for wisdom and truth wherever they are or whenever. Shadow attribute, inability to commit to a path once found. Doctor Strange. Yes! Oh, a plus nice. to Handy. Nailed it. All right, I got one here. The Father. This is one of the key Jungian ar archetypes, I believe. Light attributes, talent for creating and supporting life. Positive guiding light within a tribal unit. Shadow attributes, dictatorial control, abuse of authority. Now, to me, I didn't know that we had to pick just for this movie. So this actually spans his entire character throughout the entire MCU uh, universe movies. So talent for creating, supporting life, uh, positive guiding light within a tribal unit, and but sometimes dictatorial control, abuse of authority. Who is is he missing an eye? Yes. Well, <laughs> there's multiple people missing an eye. Is he? Uh, does his last name rhyme with puree, but not quite? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, I, I'm still lost somehow. Nick Who is Fury. Oh, <laughs> so puree. Nick Fury. Nick Fury is absolutely the father, right? He's, yes. He's the father of Cap, Cap, Captain Marvel. He's, right. and but in Winter Soldier, I believe, or something, he he starts to become more dictatorial control kind yeah. of guy he starts to like r become rogue against the government right is that what happens something yeah, yeah. but he, he does get very authoritarian right over the avengers right he's not when he knows he's right he doesn't really care what other people think that's right yeah all right okay very right, good all right the destroyer uh, light attributes <laughs> releasing what is potentially destructive preparing for new life oh. shadow attributes Intoxication with destructive power, destroying others' dreams or potential. Thanos. I mean, Woo! the Mad Titan. You nailed it. I that one's kind of easy. All right. No, well, at first I thought well, it was going to be the Hulk, but then yeah. I was, as you went, as you went to it, I was But like, the oh. attributes didn't quite match. Knight. Mm. Uh, Knight. Oh, shit. Light attributes, loyalty, romance, and chivalry. A love of honor. And then shadow attributes. Allegiance to a destructive ruler or principle. Romantic delusions. Captain America. Really? What do you say? What do you say? Um, hmm. How about... What about Nebula? Nebula. I could see that in a weird way, right? In a weird right? way, right. Allegiance. Actually, that would fit really well. Kind of. Yeah. I did go for Captain America. Okay. I actually, to be honest, I hadn't fully read the shadow attributes. Oh. Um, I will say allegiance to a destructive ruler doesn't seem like he could do. Well, during Civil War, I mean, he... I mean, but he was kind of rebelling against the destructive ruler. But, yeah, you're right. Well, it right. depends. And uh, in the if comics... If you were Iron Man, you'd be like, he was... Yeah, you know, that's fair. And And did you catch... So in the movie, when he's in the elevator and the way he gets out of fighting those dudes as he whispers, Hail Hydra. Oh, yeah. So that was in the comics not too long ago, and it was this huge controversy because they had this storyline where Captain America had been a Hydra agent all along, oh. and people were like, up rightfully, up in arms, like, what the hell? And then I think luckily it turned out to be like, not or something. Meaning but, he was a double agent the whole time? I think so. I, I didn't read that because I was so upset. <laughs> nerd. Okay, nerd. Listen to this. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm only half a nerd. <laughs> uh, victim. Oh. Light attribute. Prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. So, it, you know, it's like, I'm going to prevent myself from being victimized or victimizing other people. Shadow attributes. Playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity. Inability to maintain personal boundaries. Oh. I don't know if it exactly what? fits. What? But, but the, the archetype to me fits a particular victim. event. Oh, victim. okay. Victim. Okay. Because mm. the first one is you're trying to prevent the victimized. And then the dark one is you actually kind of fit into a victim role. Well, the key thing I was keying in on it was the fact that this person has been victimized quite a bit. Okay, then I know who it is. Uh, do you know, Drain? I'm going to say Nebula. Yes, yeah. I'm going ne Nebula. Nebula. Yeah. yeah. It's a little nebulous, but... She's like the forgotten child. She's yes. the she's the bastard child of Thanos. Right. That's that. She's always seeking his approval and never quite getting it. Well, and she, and she's, she's the perfect traumatized victim because yes. she's 
uh, she has a pathos, a sadness on the inside, but it's behind walls and walls of metal and anger and vengeance and coldness. But, yeah. But you see by the end of this whole thing that she's a human being, at, at, or she, there's something right. human about her at the beginning. Well, and you see in, in her interactions with Gamora, you always see that victim role as well. Ugh, I could take care of myself. You didn't have to save me. That's true. Or, or like... Uh, just kind of like that competitiveness. But Gamora is also being competitive, but she's like more in power of it. Yeah. Whereas uh, Nebula is like, oh, I'm always getting beat by this person. I mean, she's she's you literally know? willing to destroy herself for her father's approval. Right. Right. So I think that was one of the things that, that was one of the things that um, uh, uh, with this movie going into it that I, because I thought I had sort of written at least the beats of this movie at the end of Infinity War when I watched that. And one of them, and but this movie became completely not what I right. thought it was going to be in that they went into a lot of characters that I was like, oh, I don't think we needed more of them. No. <laughs> but, but one of the major beats I thought was going to happen in this movie was more of, um, what's her name? Nebula? Nebula. Nebula. More of Nebula going really head-to-head in sort of a, Luke versus Darth situation With her father. because they to me they had seemingly really set up that relationship yeah. and the, the the Gamora thing and to me I thought that it would be really poetic you know Jamie stabbing the mad king and maybe stabbing Cersei or something it would just be really right. poetic if if the main character to bring Thanos down was his quote unquote loyal daughter yeah, yeah. The one he abused for so many years. This right. is this is Vader throwing Emperor Palpatine down the shaft, which right. apparently did nothing. So that doesn't matter. Yeah, it's fine. No big deal. <laughs> I'm so upset about that. No but big anyways. deal. All right, next card. Okay, my last one is the Avenger, and yes, I picked that name deliberately. <laughs> Light attributes, desire to balance the scales of justice, righteousness <sighs> on behalf of society or oneself, shadow attributes, resorting to violence in the name of a cause. Does he have a keen eye? So I could see Hawkeye or I could see Black Widow. But really, I could see a lot of I mean, in this movie, that's Hawkeye. She does not have a missing eye. But wait a minute. But but Hawkeye literally goes on this rogue, justice-seeking rant. There is a rogue (laughs) archetype, and it's not so... But I'm just saying yeah. Rogue fits that too. Well, and technically, because these are all experiences, like we're all, you, this is Young's point, we're all an Avenger. Sure. We're all a hermit. Well, we're so all wait, a destroyer. Who, who was it? Wait, ho- hold on. He said it's a she. She. Did I say so Black Widow? it's got to be Pepper Potts. <laughs> yeah, obviously, it's Gwyneth Paltrow. No. no. Or Valkyrie, or I don't know. No, I mean, I guess Black Widow, but no? Or the witch? Captain Marvel. Oh. Really? Yeah. How does she... Wait, no. No? You are the weakest link. Goodbye. (laughs) Desire to balance the scales of justice, righteousness on behalf of society or oneself. She is the Messiah. She's the one that's going to save the day. For the galaxy. For the galaxy. Although, I argue her biggest Uh, contribution is saving Tony Stark in the beginning of the show. I see. And that's it. (laughs) I guess. Okay. I mean... But what's her dark part? Shadow attribute. Resorting to violence in the name of a cause. Yeah, okay. I mean... I'll allow it. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Uh, bully. See, this is this Ooh. is my controversial one. Bully. Light attributes highlights your tendency to intimidate others. Helps you confront the inner fears that bully you. Shadow attribute conceals deep fears behind verbal or physical abuse. Oh my goodness. Ha ha ha. Controversy, controversy. Uh, well, I, c- I could see Hulk being in there, but no, not really. really. It's um, not the Hulk. Is who, it? Well, it's a bully. Who else do we have left? <clears throat> we've, Highlights your tendency to intimidate others. So we've got Ant Man, War Machine. We've got uh, Black Widow. Black Widow. We've got Rocket. We've oh, got. Wait, uh, it's, say it again. Helps highlights your tendency to intimidate others. Uh, helps you confront the inner fears that bully you. And then the shadow is conceals deep fears behind verbal. Or physical abuse. Uh, you could also say Iron Man. You could say, uh, yeah, Iron Man maybe. How Iron Man? Oh, Quill maybe. Walk me through your thought process there. Why well, are... Iron Man three, he was very f- afraid. So the first bit, the light side kind of right. fits for Iron Man three because he he had PTSD in Iron sure. Man three. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. was he had panic attacks. Panic attacks, right? Um, 
but I don't know. You could also say Rocket, maybe. A he's bit. Rocket's sort of a bully. He's always fucking with people, picking yeah. on people. But he's he's not powerful enough to bully. So, you guys, bullies are never powerful. Well, uh, I mean, he's not in a position of power. <laughs> are you? Are you? Uh, I'm gonna say Rocket just by okay, default. Rocket. Um, what was my first thing I Iron said? Man. I know I said Black Widow. Uh, I? Yeah, so you like, said Black Widow. You said Black Widow. Yeah. Okay. It's not definitely not Black. No, you said Hulk first. But oh yeah, I said Hulk. No, first. no, it's not Hulk or Black Widow. So okay. <laughs> so right. who is it? It's Tony Stark. Absolutely. What? Tony Stark. See, I said absolutely. Iron Man. <laughs> no, no, absolutely, absolutely. Because listen, listen. Tony is always giving shit to everyone and bullying them. He gets his way no matter what. Yeah. And he bullied the Avengers to be like, you got to register, dude. You got to register. Okay. He bullied Captain America. But but he is deeply afraid. And so he's always using verbal abuse. Um, and I guess a little physical, but mostly verbal to, you know, to to cover that up. It's a very dark framing of that character. I'm saying he's a bully. <laughs> but what was the sh- that was the shadow side? That's a shadow. The light one yeah. is it, it, it. You intimidate others. It, Tony Stark is always intimidating others, bad guys and good guys alike. Huh. All right, this one's obvious. The trickster, oh. transcending conventions, stuffiness, and predictable behavior, and manipulating others through duplicity. Clearly, Gamora. No, I mean, uh, what's his name? Uh, Loki. Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> Groot. I am Groot. You're right. It's Groot. <laughs> uh, or Loki. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> it's, well, when Loki turns himself into Groot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was obvious. Uh, no, that was fun. That was very yeah, good. kind of cool, very, right? Maybe every... Uh, every every movie we review. Yeah, we, we bring these, these in and... Yeah. Yeah. Do one of these for a little game of throw throw. Oh, snap. Yeah. You know so, I mean? Rotten Tomatoes gave it what? Do you know? Um, 89%. Geez. Are you cheating? No, no, I swear. Okay, Here. okay. 93%. 95. Okay, oh. that, was close. that was close. Which I find to be a little weirdly high. It's not as good as us, which got like 100%. Uh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Metacritic gave it 78. That's better. Uh, uh, what do you think in terms of the ranking of opening weekend gross? Not, I don't think adjusted for inflation. I blew all numbers, right? Uh, one million dollars. What, what, um, what ranking do you think it was? I was, I thought it was number one. I thought it was number one. Yeah, number one. Okay. And how, how many dollars worldwide? Uno punto dos. Billions. I don't think I even have a concept of how much money that would be. Do you know that billions? billions? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like more than the GDP for yeah, yeah. most countries. Yeah, one, uh, one and a quarter billion dollars. Holy like, Do you realize crap. that in Spanish, billion is not a billion? No. Billion is what we call a uh, trillion, essentially. Huh. So a billion in Spanish, billion, means what it really should mean, which is a million million. Well, there's nothing confusing about that. A million, two millions, a million million, right? Sure. Okay, so name, so I have the top 30 movies opening weekend gross dollars. Who? How many of these can you name? Go. Out of 30? Yeah. Titanic? Or- no, it's that's probably too long ago, and that movie probably had legs later on. So this isn't adjusted. This is. I don't think so. Okay, this is just like. But raw even if numbers. it was, I'm sure it would be similar because you know the the amount of moviegoers right. today. Infinity War is in there. That's number two. Yeah. Wow. And so but, is. And it, but it's half as much as Endgame. No yeah. kidding. It's crazy. So Endgame doubled the number one spot. Right. It's kind of. But they added a day, so it's kind of weird, right? They'd yeah. open on a Wednesday. But still, yeah. yeah. Um, so, Infinity War, uh, then one of the Star Wars. Uh, what's the last Star Wars? Uh, Force Awakens. Yeah. Force Awakens. That's number four. Okay. Um, and then, therefore, the... Probably the new Star Wars, or the, the first Star Wars of the new series. A New Hope. No, what was it called? Uh, no, that was the Force Awakens, oh, wasn't for, it? Oh, yeah. Last Jedi, number eight. Last Jedi. Force Awakens, number four. Okay. okay. Uh, and then, what's the other uh, Avenger? Oh, Spider-Verse. Uh, no, Spider Verse. No, that no. wouldn't be no, any no, other no. Avenger. That was a small movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe the original Avengers. Oh, movie? Oh, Captain Marvel, number seven. Wow. Okay. And then, of course, uh, the fa- Fast Fate of the Furious Part Twenty or something. Oh my God. Uh, Furious Seven, number ten. Why okay. do people? Well, no, pay but, for but that? wasn't wasn't Furious uh, like wasn't there a number three? Oh. That's one of the Furious ones. Yeah, number three, Fate and the Furious. Fate and the Furious. There How about go. a DC like a Dark Knight or <laughs> no. uh, uh, Batman v Superman nine? Really? Oh, geez. Well, then I stand corrected. Hmm. Uh, well, then in that case, 
if we're going like that, Harry Potter's got to have a little entry in there, number seven. I would think so. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. There's a bunch of Harry Potter movies in here. Yeah, Deathly Hallows, part two, number six. Okay. And, uh, okay, well then, let's go one of the, one of the, oh, Deadpool. No, no, Deadpool. No, no, no. Yeah, maybe. No, 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 no. Because it didn't, no one knew yeah. until they Deadpool watched it. Deadpool 2. Yeah, I would think oh, the Deadpool second one. Deadpool 2. God, that was 27. a funny movie. I still haven't seen it. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, you haven't so seen it? Good. I still haven't seen it. So you worthy. gotta see it. And, see it. and you have to see the Fred Savage. I know the Savage. special thing. I know. I know. <laughs> I have no excuse. That's okay. I love, I love uh, you anyway. What else? Uh, you know, we talked about Star Wars. What are all the other big franchises? I mean, Off I thought I, I really thought I was onto something with Titanic. That's surprising because that was the biggest movie of all time in its day. Avatar, Avatar. Oh, Avatar. What? Oh. That's got to be on there. Okay. Yeah. Not opening weekend. Not opening weekend. Huh. Okay. I don't know if in the past they, because all these movies are within Reset. the last ten or this fifteen. This has got years. to be not adjusted. That's the thing. Yeah. But Passion of the matter. Christ. That's, that's yeah. not adjusted. Oh. So these are recent. No, I'm just. Thinking I recently like, rewatched that movie, like the first. 20 minutes or whatever yeah and i was it wasn't as bad as i remember it being no actually. it's a good movie i thought it was a good movie yeah, yeah. Uh, you know which movie was amazing it was apocalypto remember apocalypto? oh man that movie was dark when yeah. they're all getting sacrificed on the aztec yeah, temple yeah, yeah. oh my goodness that was a good movie and oh. it was uh, i rewatched no that one too and and liked it less the second oh, time really? i watched so it. i've only the, seen it once to be fair on the mel gibson note what about braveheart no, no, dude, adjust, not adjust, recent. Yeah. Stick to recent. Think all of right. movies in the last 10 years. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Like, what was the other uh, well, X-Men? So, There's an X-Men movie in there. Oh, yeah. X-Men uh, First Class. Apocalypse. Or, no. no. So I'll just read him. Oh, oh. Days of Wolverine. Future's Past. No, no, no. Wolverine was too dark because it was rated no. R. I mean, you basically got all the all the franchises. There's yeah. one. Okay, I'll say there's one franchise you did not get, which is oh pretty gosh. obvious. Wait, wait, wait. That's not bad, Let's think about this. Superman? No, no, no. We already did DC. Okay. And so, we did Marvel. And we did Marvel. This is one of the then, uh, most Disney. Lu Let's lucrative, Disney. lucrative franchises in the last... Ten years. Star Wars. No, 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 no. We've already no, said no, no, Star, Star Wars. Trek. No, 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 no. Uh, the oh my gosh, the Vampire Chicks. No. Star Trek. Well, well, so that's in there a oh, little bit. Oh, then okay. there Hunger Games. Uh, Hunger Games Part Four, or Part Three, or something. Strangely, no. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, ten years. Think ten years. There's, there's actually sexy two... shades of Fifty Shades of something. <laughs> there's actually. So you already said that, right? No, I didn't no, say Sixty didn't Shades. Say that of... one, oh right? no, that was not in there. Okay. There's actually two other franchises okay, okay, that, that you haven't. Mentioned. Last ten years, I... franchises that. What does Disney own? There's what actually Disney owns everything. Oh, Disney owns you. There's and actually Disney. three. There's actually three franchises. Pixar movie. Well, oh, think about oh, the Pixar, 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 Pixar. Uh, like, like the Toy Story 3. The Incredibles 2. No. Okay. Not a Toy Story? Any no, Pixar one, at all? No. Toy Story hasn't come. Oh, no Pixar? Just, just, Wait, name, really? just name the, the franchise and I'll tell you. Well, if that's you what it. I'm thinking. I... There was no Indiana recently. No. There is no... Um... The, so one of the franchises makes sense because you, the two of you probably have never seen any of these movies, but oh, they are massive. Really? But there's but there's two other ones. Goosebumps. <laughs> there's two other ones that you you know that you haven't mentioned yet. Holy crap. Uh, I'm going to slap my forehead. Uh, okay, it's, 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 there's no Star Trek in there. I already no. said that. No, okay, okay, okay. But how are these uh, not on that list is what I want to know. Wait, but just, think, just think franchise, huge franchise movies that we... That we we haven't mentioned. Like, is there been one, an alien? Okay, I'll give we you a hint. Did Disney. We did. I mean, I'll give you a hint. Alien? I'll give you a hint. One franchise goes way back and was sort of reinvigorated in recent years. Um, another franchise has been consistently going <laughs> at it for the past like fifteen years. James <laughs> Bond. No, James. Fifteen years. Wait, okay, but James Bond's got to have one in there. But, no. but yeah, Bond. No? How oh is that god. possible? And, oh my god! Just think of shitty ass. Uh, well, I already said Fast and the Furious, right? Yeah. Think of worse than, than that. that. Like, worse than that. Franchises. Medea, Medea rulers all. Tyler Perry. You're thinking in the right category. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> think, think like comedies yeah, with. Yeah. Uh, well, no, uh, don't think comedies. Well, but but it's one actor playing or multiple roles. No, no, like, yeah. no. Going deeper in the cold, cold. <laughs> okay, um, I think, I'm trying to think of another. Uh, Hint. Okay. <laughs> All I phone a friend. Three really? of these, all three of these franchises have massive CGI. Uh, massive CGI. Transformers. Projects. Yes. Oh, Woo! Transformers. So two more. Well, but which tra was it? Uh, is there more than one Transformers? In there? I heard a Transformer Age of pickup Extinction. Line. Who knows? Uh, Age of uh, Extinction. Okay, so other ones. Oh like no, that. Dark Side of the Moon. Others like that. Dark oh, oh, oh. What about that? That. Uh, 
the one with the monster, the huge monsters in the deep. No, that, no. not that one. Okay, that, that's okay, only okay. two of those movies. But. All right, all right, right. What other these heavy CGI? Both of these franchises have like at Michael least Bay movies. five Ugh. movies. Five movies? At God. least, if uh, I'm guessing. Oh, uh, no. I mean, what else has the... Okay, I'll give you another hint. So, so one of them had was big a long time ago, had a massive okay. dark spell, yeah. and was recently reinvigorated. Recently you just reinvigorated. explained every movie released in the last five years. <laughs> That's but, a fair but think of a, but think of Tomb Raider. <laughs> but in, and in that, we have at least five movies. So it's, okay, not, okay. it's not like What's Ghostbusters. What's the one, the, the Pharaoh's one, the, the Mummy? The Mummy. No. Okay. That uh, didn't come back. But they did. Tom Cruise did a Mummy. But that wasn't made 25 years ago, no, 30 years fine, ago. Fine, fine, fine. Think, I think... Early '90s was when it uh, began. GI Joe. <laughs> what was the biggest movie in the '90s? In the '90s, uh, Forrest Gump, uh, Saving Private Ryan. That uh, that had a massive CGI uh, budget. Massive CGI budget in the '90s. Matrix. No. Uh, it was in the '90s. And okay. It didn't Barely. have a massive budget. That's fair. Uh, what what has? Dude, I got nothing, man. God damn it! The the <laughs> first big CGI movie of all time was Titanic. No, just no before oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, Jurassic Park. Yeah. Oh, oh no, Jurassic Park and the Hidden World. I gave you so many hints. Oh. Okay, now this next one, I'm trying to think of another. And this oh one's God. even higher. This we one's suck. even higher. <laughs> This next no, that one. That was a pretty obscure one. No, no, Jurassic Park. I mean, who's heard of Jurassic Park? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so, this next one is started probably 15, 12 years ago. Mad Max. Has, has at least five movies in it. You've probably seen the first one and you, you've heard of all the other ones, but never saw them. Kind of similar. It's similar to the Transformers okay. uh, franchise. Okay. Um, there's an iconic character. Played by a very famous actor oh at the God. center of this, uh, Mission uh, Impossible. Uh, no, no, massive CGI. Is there? Are there no Mission Impossibles here? No, weird. Just okay. w- massive CGI, but not what you would think. But when you when you think of these movies, you're like, yeah, there's. Who frame be- Roger Rabbit? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so there's okay, a, a famous whatever. character. Oh. It takes place. What? Okay, go ahead. Takes place in history. In history. Back to the Future. No. no only that's too old, in history. Too old, too old. No, only, only in history. In history. With uh, massive CGI. And you only saw one. And there's been others. Well, you might have seen all of them. I don't know. What? They're, I'm sure they're A massive all, CGI high. movie. And there's five of them? Winnie the Pooh. I think five Christopher ish. Robin. No. Uh, Dude. I mean, what goes in t- back in time? No, it doesn't Patrick go back in time. It's not Bill and Ted's set, Excellent Adventure. set in back in set time. Set in the history. Yeah. Set with in With massive back. CGI. Yeah. And there's a character... That we love. He plays a very flamboyant character flamboyant who does who does this arms. who does this a lot. Who the hell? What is I this? I have no idea. <laughs> when he when he's running, he's like, Ooh. oh, Jar Jar Binks. No, <laughs> even with your amazing uh, <laughs> pantomime here, I still don't know. Okay, uh, one more what the hint. Hell is this? It happens. Oh, what time frame? How far? Are yeah, like, yeah, yeah, eighteen hundreds. I think maybe seventeen hundreds. Maybe Sherlock seven, Holmes. N- close, but no. I mean, that's a good guess. I mean, what is happening uh, it happens, in the 1800s? It happens. We saw one of these movies? I'll say this. It doesn't happen on land. On water. So like a like a pirates or a naval. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. Uh, pirates of the Caribbean. It's Caribbean, uh, bro. Oh, Caribbean. What is it? Caribbean. Cri- Caribbean. Caribbean. I'm just being. Caribbean I'm just being a queen. <laughs> so. Uh, listeners out there, let us know how many times you wanted to throw your phone at the wall. Oh, my God. I'm so <laughs> sorry. We failed everyone. We failed the internet today. Uh, no, you're pretty good. You're pretty good. <laughs> I don't know if I could have guessed it. Pirates. Why didn't I well, well, because that's the thing. You, The three of us couldn't care less. Yeah. About, about most of those. And and probably haven't seen the last three and will never see another one. I only one. saw the yeah. first two Pirates. Oh, right. they're, they're awful. Yeah. A lot of those are crap. No, the, the and there's a lot part. of those on the list. that I w- It's like, why, how's well, Harry uh, Potter not on there? How oh, is on. Harry the Potter first is Pirates, on there. The first oh, okay. Pirates was fun. I, yeah, the, the first Pirates, Pirates was okay. Yeah, yeah. It was, I, think, I think what people really liked about those movies was Johnny Depp's character, well, but the, not the, 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 the movie. 
No, no, the, the Orla- Orlando Bloom, like that. It was fun. Orlando Bloom is the most underwhelming actor I've oh ever my, seen. Well, fine, but Ugh. the first I was just talking about one movie. I get. I'll give it to you, buddy. Just give him one I, movie. Yeah, sure. And Legolas. Legolas, for he has no Legos. <laughs> he should be. <laughs> By the way, Legolas in The Hobbit is more like T one thousand. Yeah, he 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 might he has the personality depth of the T one thousand. Yeah, I'm surprised none of those movies are on here. It's not adjusted. I'm yeah, for you. me, when I saw Lord of the Rings, the f- when they first came out, I was so obsessed because I grew up reading those books. Right. And as a as a fifth grader, I was so boggled by the language because it's really an adult, Ooh, especially yeah. the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I tried to read. So I read The Hobbit as a kid, but I tried to read Lord of the Rings in high school and I couldn't. Yeah. Even The Hobbit is, it's got some complex portions to yep. it and it, and they're not it's not written like a kid's book nope and so i always grew up with this general sense of the picture in my mind of the story but it a lot of it was kind of confusing to me like saruman was always like well what was he exactly like <laughs> what, what was his powers right. i don't really get it and they came out with some cartoons when i was a kid in the in the 80s for the hobbit and they did oh, lord of the rings but they did like part one, and then they they didn't sell enough tickets, so they never did part two. Oh. I didn't know there was a cartoon of the part one of Lord of the Rings. It's horrible, oh. but at least Are we talking it, about Fellowship of the Ring. Fellowship of the Ring, but oh. I think it might just be like Lord of the Rings part one or something. I'm not sure. Okay, and it's a horrible movie, and a lot of it is they did um, you know actual film, and then they would color over yeah. it, but in a really rudimentary way, and they would reuse scenes and stuff. It was really bad. Weird. Anyway, so when I saw Lord of the Rings, the the first, you know, the 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 Peter Jackson movies, I was so into it, and the CGI at the time was pretty good. Yeah. Looking back on it, like there's some pr- there's some rough edges to those movies when I look back on those movies. There's some also kind of some cheesy scenes that that when I saw at the time, I ate it up all. I mean, I watched those. I got the DVDs. I remember. For Christmas, I would I would ask for the D, the special edition DVDs the because, extra ten hours of <laughs> right because it, 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 it came it was four DVDs oh my so God. you you had the first two DVDs were the extended version of the movie right which was like four hours long and then and also commentary by like four different groups of people wow they, they did they did a commentary with oh like the Fellowship guys. They did commentary with the writers. And so you they, have to watch it each time to listen to each one of them. And comments. I did. Oh my god! And I multiple. And then the second two DVDs were f- all these featurettes of of behind the scenes and stuff. You know, this is before YouTube, so it's it was like, like me with American Psycho. But there weren't that many commentaries. <laughs> so when The Hobbit came out, I was super into it because I thought, man, if you know, right. they're going to do an amazing job. And Ugh. I was like you in Phantom Menace, where I was watching these movies, going like. These are good, right? These right? are good, yeah, right? They are, right? And and Aren't after they? a while, you know, I I just right, guys? like sud- someone popped my balloon. I don't know who, and I was like, oh yeah, oh these are God, shit. That's terrible. These are terrible. <laughs> they not only are they just bad movies, but it completely does an injustice yep. to the story. Yeah. It should have been one great movie. Just yeah. that story. Don't add all the bullshit. Just tell the good story. Yeah. Yes, but it's a money making machine, yeah. and you yeah, have to keep going. But but I was. I was surprised because, like, I I had this dissolution, dissolution. I had this uh, like false notion that Peter Jackson was not like that. Yeah, but of course he is. It's just like, you know he, he gets money. So. Yeah, I mean he was he was really respected in by everybody uh, during Lord of the Rings, and then after that it was like he did King Kong, yeah, which oh. was which was pretty rough. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I did laugh so hard during that movie because I was with with a couple buddies and. We just made fun of it the whole time. So it's kind of like Waterworld for me. It was a great comedy. (laughs) King Kong's a very simplistic plot that worked well in a silent 30s era, but (laughs) it's not complex enough to bring to the forefront now. And they had some of the same elements in The Hobbit that they had in King Kong, which were these kind of Roadrunner-ish, you know, Looney Tunes moments. Yeah. Where you're like, is this a cartoon? What are we watching? Well, when you got Jack Black as the main <laughs> right. protagonist, right? Well, do you remember in in The Hobbit when the 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 dwarves are running through the mines and all that stuff? That felt like a cartoon, yeah, and not in a good way. Like it's like that's silly, right? Uh, it was similar to how I felt about uh, the scenes with Legolas, which is like. Okay, so now he's just like skateboarding on stuff, yeah. and then he never misses any no. shots, and he can like he's a god. He's a god now. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. 
switching gears, last 10 minutes of this episode, Game of Thrones. We're going to spoil it. We just watched episode three, season eight. Oh. Yes. This episode's probably going to come out after episode four or five. So if, if you're not up to episode Snuff. three, then go back and watch. Yeah. Um, so I realize the settings on my TV is set really dark. Oh, yes. yeah. Bad, bad episode for that. Oh, man. <laughs> so because I was watching the episode going like, man. I can't see anything. <laughs> I can't see anything. But that's kind of interesting because it, it added to the sheer tension. <laughs> Stacy woke up the next day and said, because we, so we, we watched Avengers Sunday night, Drain and I. Yeah. And Stacy. And then uh, we came home. And then watched <laughs> episode three. Um, and a, a lot I'd of, be disappointed if you didn't. That's right. a lot of watching in one night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that must have been a great night, though. It was. And Stacy was, um, she woke up the next day saying that she was physically sick from the tension of episode three. Whoa. Because it was so tense. <laughs> oh, my God. Tense. So good. I was very leaning tense. forward. The You know, I, I'm like on literally on the edge of my seat the entire movie. And just going like, oh my god, what? Wait, oh, wait, oh no, oh, oh no! Right. Like when when the when the Dothraki get consumed, oh, and you're yeah. just like, but oh. why? From such a, a battle great, tactician, such a great battle tactic. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> let's send those guys out by themselves to fight everybody. I love the it made no I, sense. I love the episode. Wait, fire. so as you're watching the episode, were you angry? Yes, at this part, I, I was, was annoyed angry. at that. Yeah, I, I got so happy. Like the episode was amazing. What was what was really striking is when they finally collide with the 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 army of the dead and there are so many of them oh, yeah, that yeah, it's yeah. like a wave of yeah. water pouring yeah, over and, them and do not get me wrong you can't even swing your sword because there's so many of them right they're literally overwhelmed and, and don't get me wrong I, I really did love the episode and 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 in fact if anything that dumb move in my in my opinion it, it only added to the stress and the and the desperation because yeah. you're like okay now all the dothraki are gone jorah almost died and as soon as they start showing up there's no end to them yeah. And then they keep coming. And then they start throwing themselves over the fire. And then they start climbing the walls. And you're like, oh my God. Yeah. So I knew I knew for a fact, like I absolutely called that uh what's his name? The uh the uh the traitor from Winterfell. Um a Theon. Theon. Theon Greyjoy I knew was gonna die. Yeah. I knew Jorah was gonna die. Okay. Because and, and again, I was being like, look, whose character arcs are complete? Definitely Theon, definitely Jorah. But like, so those is Brienne. are complete. So uh -uh. Is but she's not. She's because she just got knighted. She's not, with she Jamie. Has to but she finally reached the goal. I, and I know. I, I hear you. I, I personally didn't. I, I was like, she's too main. So they're, they're not going to kill her. The one that I was surprised is I thought the Hound was going to get it. Right. And I thought the Hound was going to get it. And, and what's her name was going to take his face and use that face in, uh, in, in, in down in the south later. Gregor. Sam yeah. should have died. But... Oh no, no, no. He I should not like, have survived down there in that battle where, where the zombies were oh, washing over him like a wave of water. I agree with you technically speaking. He doesn't have the chops to fight like that. I agree with you technically speaking, but I just knew that they weren't gonna do that because this isn't George R. R. Martin. I have a grape. Why did the red woman walk into the middle of the snow and just like take her necklace off and die? <laughs> I, I think she was done. The 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 Lord of Light was done with her. Mm. I actually had more of a gripe with why we didn't see more battles with the White Walkers. Like I wanted to see more of that. Yeah. Like they, they didn't get to fight. Well, the there were so walkers. many of them that they didn't serve as soldiers. They more served as a wave Acolytes. to wash yeah. things away. You know, it was like a yeah. the hand of God just swiping everything away. Um, well, I mean, no, the White Walker. I mean, the the White Walkers are the oh, like the, not the, the lieutenants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. those are the cool badasses from the very beginning of the show. I was hoping to see a few a few of the good guys take out a couple of them. Yeah. And maybe one of those kill one of the main guys with some viciousness before they were able to beat them. I love the whole thing. I was on the edge of my seat. Y'all can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle in which we nerd about, about various different things. So Please hard. take care of yourself because... You deserve it. Yeah, you do.